All right, so we are here for Light of uh, Zaraxis, this Village Jammer module. Uh, this is session five or six, as I recall. Uh, I'll do a quick recap of last session. You guys feel free to poke holes in it or add anything else that I may have missed. Uh, last session, you guys were at uh, Vokath's arena. Vokath is uh, the Murkane, which is basically a space giant. Uh, and you guys were in the arena fight, his little... Uh, base of operations. Uh, after the fight, uh, Zeleth, uh, the princess's brother, showed up on a solar dragon and basically demand that uh, you guys give up Zadali so he could bring her back for the coronation back in uh, Zorixia. Uh, he arrived with a fleet of no less than 20 ships that had Vokas base surrounded. Um, so Zadali basically calmed the crowd and then volunteered to go with her brother to avoid bloodshed. Um, during her speech, I don't know if you guys ever figured it out, but she somehow went down to the arena floor and tossed a ring. I believe it was near, was it near Enix? You found the ring that was on the arena floor and then she yeah, spoke yeah. to you telepathically. Kev's okay. character, right? Uh, no, I think it was Don's character. It was not well, NX. It was not NX. It I was. Think, oh, it yeah. was. It was Don's character. What? Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, just watch. Yeah, you even. You, you said that you picked it up. <laughs> okay. All right, Don. You're going to lose a, a, a the inspiration <laughs> card if you can't remember this. <laughs> All right, so we're going to retcon whether it happened or not. That that's what happened since Don is here tonight. Enix uh, is the one that noticed a, a dream drop on the floor of the arena, and then oh wait, Zidalia, Enix is the oh yeah, I'm sorry, you yeah, you're right, it was Enix. It can't be can't be Kevin's character because Kevin doesn't play in this game. Uh, he was here last time though. I thought yeah, he was he was here yeah. last time, but he doesn't play regularly. He wouldn't have grabbed it. Gotcha. Right. Okay, my bad. Okay. So does this ring a bell with you, Don? You know, I watched the, I even watched the recap, or I watched the whole video. <laughs> I don't remember this, but. <laughs> and you still don't remember. Well, you yeah. have a ring. Uh, you have Zadalia's signet ring. And she telepathically communicated to you, Enix. I don't have my notes here, but what she said to you, but basically said something on the lines of, use this ring to to your advantage i'm going with my brother so that we don't basically cause bloodshed here i'm sure there was probably more to it than that but my notes don't have it in here uh that ring is basically like her bloodline it's uh proof that she's the princess uh he left on the back of a solar dragon and then you guys all met with the other factions that were there for the arena fights. Um, Urkane even called in a few more of the of the other factions in the this Doom Space area. And you guys convinced pretty much every faction to join the cause to fight against the uh, Xerixian Empire. Um, I think it was Enix that fought the Artuk to mm -hmm. gain to turn their uh, their mood from host hostile to indifferent. <laughs> they respected you for your your wrestling skills. How you pretty much pinned him easily, like several times, even after he tried to hurt you. Uh, but even they uh, came forth with some ships. So the plan is that within ten days' time, you guys will have twenty ships uh, plus the second wind that you guys are on now uh, at Pocast Base to basically use that armada to take on the Xerxian Empire. Um, you know that it will be about a five-day journey to Xerixia space. And then you guys can use the Wild Space Ori, which is now in the possession of the Aarakocca fleet. That was part of the uh, deal to convince them to help you guys. Uh, but you use that Wild Space Ori to locate the Imperial Cit Citadel, which is approximately another day's journey once you get into Xerixia space. Okay. So I think that's all that happened in the last session. Do you guys remember anything else that I've missed in there? Okay. Take us a no. 
All right, so a couple mechanical things during the 10 days of downtime while the rest of the fleets uh, rally themselves to Murkas, uh, to Bokas uh, uh, base. Uh, Grimzod is going to approach... Well, I got to read my notes here. You guys gave something away that was Grimzod's. Oh, you guys gave uh, the helm to his ship to one of the factions in order to um, talk them into helping you. So Grimzod basically gives you the whole, you give them what? That was mine. Why don't you just stick me through the heart while you're at it? Especially giving you guys grief for giving away his, uh, his spell jamming helm that was part of the last breath. So he tells you guys you owe him a spell jamming helm and or a ship once this is done. It's off on that. Yeah, we, never on that. We, we never promised him that. And that's the second spell jamming helm that we've gotten while we've been out, out and about. Where, did you get two of them? I thought it was just that one. Where did no, you get another got, one from? We got an early one when we were with the, uh, when we were doing the, um, when we were do when we first fought the, um, uh, the elves, the astral elves. Okay, I couldn't remember if you grabbed that one or not. I thought you left yeah, it. Grab that one because yeah. uh, that, because that's the one that we were going to potentially bring home and give to uh, and give to Erbo. Okay, all right. Yeah, I see it under astral elves in the loot bags. So that makes sense. Okay, and we all never right, prom- we, and we never promised him a helm ever. But if I we think- go and destroy the other fleet, then he'll yep. he should have his pick. Then there might be um then there might be helms under everybody's seats. Right. And you Buddy. get a helm and you get a helm. <laughs> yeah, he was still hoping to go back to where you guys stashed his ship uh once this is all done, because the ship was un- needed repair and you guys didn't want to wait for that, as you recall. Lucky we didn't t- lucky we didn't take that helm. Yeah. <laughs> so the wild space ori is kind of just an add on to a helm, right? To help you navigate better. Is that the idea? It's it's like it's like navigator's tools. Yeah, it's something okay. allows you to pull it up and give you like a hologram of what where the planets are and everything inside that little wild space system. If that makes Actually, sense. So he doesn't care about losing that, or we, maybe he never knew we had it. That wasn't his. Yeah, that was ours. From you guys got that from Topola. She gave Shark, you guys that. Sharknado in and... space is what I see here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think I think Sparky was there on that one, wasn't he? I think so. Yeah, because yeah. she had uh, some little autumnal Tom gnome things that worked yeah. in the tower with her. Wow. Okay, cool. Blast from the past. Okay. All right. So a couple other mechanical things. Uh, part of Enix's, I guess, uh, talking the Artooks and helping them was that he had to travel on their ship. And Teddy, the same thing. He was also with the pirate, the human pirates. Um, they wanted him to ride, ride with them on the way to Zerk's so They could learn more songs or an instrument or something like that. So, a couple mechanical things here. Uh, there is reason behind this. I'm not just trying to fill stuff. But Enix, uh, after the sorry, once all the ships get there and you guys are ready to take off for Zerixia space, is there anything you guys want to ask, talk, do while you're still at Bocas Base? Before I go into this next part, uh, just top up, uh, top off on supplies if we can. Uh, what kind of supplies are you talking about? Like um, healing potions. Yeah. Oh yeah, healing. Oh, wait, I can't even use them. Can I? Yo, I know I can. And manning mana if we need them. Well, we'll have a long rest, right? Bef- several long rests, I guess. Really. I thought we said ten days. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have plenty of time to rest up. Everyone should be at, be at full health, full mana, full everything, everything recharged. Because it was 10 days to get all the ships ready to uh, go after, go into Xerixia space. Okay. Um, I'll say that uh, Mer- Mercane Vocath has a private stash of uh, healing potions. And everyone that's going wants one. So he can give up one healing potion per person. Okay. So you can add those to your character sheets at no charge. Don't forget that applies to Marigold and Arnold as well. Arnold. Gotcha. Okay. Anything else you guys want to do, prepare, talk about before the fleet takes off? 
Uh, I was supposed to be going with the Artukes. Artukes. Um, how's that going to work? No, we're going to get into that. Oh, okay. You are on the ship with the Artukes, and I think the Artukes are the one that had the was it squid ship, squid ship or lamprey ship, and Teddy. Technically, even though he's not here tonight, he was going to be on the ship with the human pirates, which I think were the space galleons. Okay. And where uh, are the rest of us? Which ship are we on? We're wasn't, with, he uh, sing, wasn't he singing a song? He was singing a song with those space pirates. Yeah. Teaching them, yep. teaching them a song. Correct. Correct. And we're all still with our original uh, captain I, pilot. I assumed that you guys were going to still be on the second win with uh, mm-hmm. Commander Crux. Um, I would like to keep you guys all together. Even though um, both Enix and Teddy are on different ships, but we'll see what happens with that once we take off. <laughs> you guys okay? We just stick it with uh, the second win, the living ship with the Treant. Sparky and Arnold are good. Okay, I'm just trying to find the notes in here to tell you which ships were what. Oh, here it is. Ericocra have five Shrike ships. That's uh, one of the ships that. Uh, Nope, none of you guys are on that one. Our Tukes, they have lamprey ships. That's the ones that have like little short little tentacles in the front of them. You use for grabbing hold of a ship and basically lock them in place. Uh, you're on one of those ships with them. Enix, humans have three space galleons. Um, the Surons, those skinny lizard people, have six wasp ships. And the Thrykreen, the insect people, had four scorpion ships. And then Mercain also called in two hammerhead ships and five squid ships. With his contacts. Okay, so again, 21 ships in total is your armada as you head out. Okay? All right, so Enix, here's what I want to do mechanically. Um, you're with the Artukes. Uh, they, <laughs> you still, give me, give me three insider perception checks, is what I'll say, during the 10 days while these, uh, while these ships are still, um, Arriving inside or perception, correct to you, yeah. Whisper them to me at advantage, right? Uh, no, <laughs> at triple elven advantage. Good to know, okay. Okay. All right. Over the course of 10 days, as the other ships are arriving, um, you overhear, or maybe you heard from others that can actually understand the Arctic's language, that uh, there are quite a few of them that still despise you. And you even hear a couple of them talk about how once they get out from Bocas base, they plan on jettisoning you out into, out into the astral sea uh, the first chance they get. Okay. I think, is there like any of them that are bigger than the rest? Any of the Artukes? Yeah. Or are they well, all the same size? A bigger, they're, they're all about the same size. I mean, you know the hierarchy. Uh, the elders are the green ones. That's the one you wrestled in the last session. Uh, Rass- but they're all Rass- relatively Rass- about the same size. Yes, you wrestled. Wrestled. Okay. Because I, I might just, like, see if anybody else is wanting to wrestle. <laughs> you want to try to talk them out of, uh, see if you can change their mind by wrestling them again? Well... Did they change their mind before? I mean, uh, again, this, this, is, me now? this is this is during the ten days when we're still getting all the ships to show up at the up, uh, at the base. You haven't actually left, uh, but the plan is for they want you to travel with them on their ships. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I'd like to. Uh, I, how do I get in in their best graces? That's that's how the only way I'm I'm aware of. That's what I want you to think about. Well, I talk about what else happens during the 10 days. Okay. Okay. 
Um, this is where I guess I'm going to do it. You know what? I don't need to narrate this because it's about Teddy. I'll just roll real quick and you guys will see what happens as you take off. Okay. All right. So just quickly for you, Don. Okay. Um, are you going to do anything about what you heard before the ships take off? Or are you going to try to resolve this before all the ships take off? Oh, I'd like to do it, yeah, out in public if possible. But, um, yeah. But you, you want to resolve it and take over. You want to resolve this before the ships take off. Okay, what is your, what's your plan? What are you wanting to try to do? Oh, I want them to respect me, so I'm going to ask them if they have any better wrestlers. <laughs> so, you're, so you're insulting the elder by saying, do they have any better wrestlers? Um, is that your plan? No, I want to ask who their <laughs> champion is. That's what I want to do. Uh, and they, they're, over the course of 10 days, they will tell you that you, you bested their, their champion. The elder was their champion. Oh, <laughs> Does he want a rematch then? <laughs> he t he tells you through an interpreter, because I'm assuming you still can't speak Artuk. Probably Mercane, the Mercane vocath is one doing this interpretation for you or, or translation. Uh, the Artuk tell you that you've already proved your, your point. It says uh, you ride with them in the seat of honor as they uh, take on Xerixia space. Okay, I'm cool. I'm comfortable with being jettisoned. So, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you going to tell the rest of us what you overheard, Don? Before, or sorry, uh, Enix? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I would have been telling you guys the entire time. Um, hey, if these guys got it in for me, I'll be okay for a little while out there in space. But I, come collect me. <laughs> so you're sharing with everybody else what you heard? Yeah. Just okay. on our team, okay. in our group. Okay. Then in that case, have uh, everybody give me a wisdom check. Son of a bitch, guys. Damn, <laughs> we are some wise MOs. And I have a clue what's about to happen to him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so both Sparky and Simon, you guys have this conversation between the two of you because Enix just doesn't see it happening. So you guys think that, so if he rides with them and they go through with this, then they have basically lost the, they'll probably lose the respect the rest of the Armada. There's a good chance that the other ships will either turn on them or the Artukes will just turn turn tail and run once they jettison um once they jettison Enix. However, if you guys can figure out a way to convince them to let Enix ride with somebody else, with you guys, then there's probably less of a chance of them deserting the fleet. Does that make sense? So we need to talk them out of having Enix ride with them. Is that what you're saying? If Or find if a way. What, if what Enix heard was true, that they plan on jettisoning him once they get out of the wild space, then that will probably lead to the Artukes and their ships basically pulling out of the mission. Enix, what is your class again? Fighter. Mm -hmm. Eldritch Knight. Hmm. What we're looking for here is like a skill challenge again. You guys yeah. decide or tell me how you want to try to talk them into letting him stay. I mean, Don, I mean, Enix tried. He asked about, you know, who else can he wrestle? But he already beat their champion. And the champion is the one that told him he gets a ride in the seat of honor uh, on their ships as they go to Xerxia space. But you're, you're saying we need to figure out how to way to get him off their ship and onto our ship, onto the second wind. Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying something different? You got to figure out how to get him off, uh, whether it's covert, you know, sneaky, sneaky, or convince the Artukes, give them a good reason why Enix needs to be with, you know, on another ship and not theirs. Somebody to talk them out of it. And and to be clear, 
Enix, what you heard as far as those rumors and stuff didn't come from the elder. Who did it come from? It came from other shipmates on on the uh, the ship. Let me look at it again. How many's on each ship? Does it tell me? I gotta look it up. And they've got a crew. Each ship is gonna have a crew of X number of crew members. Mostly depends on how many weapons they've got on there. For one second while I look up the uh what are they on? Squid ships? Yeah, squid ships. So uh, the elder may not even the elder may not even know about this, right? Possibly. Or it's just a rumor. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like well, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, either the crew is plotting something on their own without the elder knowing, or the crew doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. Normal crew on a squid ship is 13. And they're squid. Oh, sorry. It wasn't squid. It was a lamprey ship. Sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. Like, it's probably going to be the same number. Lamprey. Oh, 15. Requires a crew of 15 on a lamprey ship. That's a minimum. I Sparky would suggest that uh, Enix talk to the elder, like pull him off to the side and say, look, I getting the feeling you're going to try to pull something on me. What's going on here? And just confront him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying that's the right answer, but that's probably what Sparky would say. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking, too, but I didn't think it was the right answer either. I was thinking I'm just trying might... to. Th- I can't think of a great reason to convince them to let you, to like say, "Oh, he has to ride with us," unless like unless we do subterfuge and just sneak you off before take off or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I could do that. I could sneak off. I think. Simon, what's your what's your opinion? I think we should go straight to the elder and say, "Listen." There's rumors that your guys are going to throw our uh, throw our guy off into space, uh, at first chance they get, and that's going to cause problems for you specifically, uh, because the rest of the fleet's going to turn on you, and uh, you guys will not be uh, you guys will no longer help the uh, no longer be allied. They'll be ostracized by the rest of the Goth, uh, yeah. and uh, you guys are you guys are going to have to you guys are going to have to go it alone. Yeah, I like. I mean, we're all in agreement. Then let's go. Let's go to the elder. Okay. What do you say? Who's got the best intimidation slash persuasion of our group? Well, I have the best. Not Sparky. I have six perception, six deception. Sorry, persuasion and six deception. I think you beat anything Arnold or Sparky has. I got two intimidation. So it should probably be. I've got, I've got I've got three intimidation just by standard. It should be Simon. Then sounds like. And what's Marigold got? I doubt she has anything to match Simon, does she? Oh, she's a Karen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so she's yeah. Okay, gotcha. She'll complain if she doesn't yeah. get her way. Well, that's that is one way to intimidate, after all. <laughs> but yeah, okay. <laughs> so Simon, I, you're our spokesperson. I think that makes sense for the skill check. Sure. So you're gonna. If I heard you right, you're basically going to try to convince him that if what they're saying, if the rumors are true, that they're going to jettison him, that that would basically turn the rest of the fleet on onto him. Well, I think that's two, it's it's two phases. That's part yeah. two. If okay. part one isn't going well, part one is to let him know, to let him in on, because he might not know. He might not know that some of his people are are making those kinds of statements, and um. If he truly is sort of honorable, which that's strength, strength is strength is the best and our guy beat their guy. So if he truly is honorable and believes that phase one is going to be him saying, oh, crap. Yeah, that would be very dishonorable. And then the second part of that is where I say, and if you guys are going to act dis- uh, not honor with without honor, um, Vargoth is going to uh, Vargoth is going to give you guys the boot. 
um, and not just now, but uh, in perpetuity potentially, because uh, if you can't be honorable in this situation, you obviously uh, can't be counted on in the fight and therefore also can't be counted on um, down the line in the future, in future endeavors, including trade. Oh, with Volcan. Okay. I, I, yeah. I thought you said somebody else. Okay. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's pretty good. Because like I, I think I shared with you guys last time, the the Mercane have like this hive mind mentality. So if you piss off one of them, you pissed off all of them. And oh, they are pretty right. much like the, the, I guess, wild space merchant guild, so to speak, when it comes to space jamming helms and uh, ships and magic items, stuff like that. Okay, I like that. So uh, then give me a persuasion check with advantage on that. I liked it so much. Ooh. Whisper it to me. Oh, sorry. I just sent it. I'll, uh, I'll, whisper, I'll whisper a different set of rules. Okay. Uh, it was a 21 and a 13. I just whispered it to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He seems to uh, understand your logic. Uh, this is through an interpreter. I don't know who he ended up having to interpret. Probably Bocath or one of the Gith Yankee, I think, are bilingual in r as well. The Gith Yankee Knights. Um, through the translator, uh, I'll say it's a Gith Yankee. He tells you that uh, this is very, he finds this very disturbing that his, uh, his men, his men, his crew uh, would do something dishonorable and he will investigate this to verify the validity of it. And if it's true, then he will make sure that uh, this is not going to be something that is acted upon. So phase, so phase three of this is since we've heard these rumors, we can't let our, we can't let our crew member um, stay on your vessel. Yeah. They, 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 we, we, we can't, we can't allow it because if you can't control, if you can't keep control of your people, um, we can't run the risk of losing our losing our comrade. So our friend will be trans will be traveling with us. If you can prove yourself in battle, then maybe we'll allow him to travel back with you. But we'll have to see. Okay, give me another persuasion check. This one's going to be regular. Whisper it to me. Good to know. He tells you uh, through the translator, it would be disrespectful for Enix to turn down the seat of honor, uh, but he will still investigate this uh, rumor of uh, what his crew said is going to do. If he discovers that it is true, he will give Enix the opportunity to fight this Artuk that led this rumor, this coup. No, oh, that's, that, that's not good enough. It's not it's not Enix that's um, turning us down. Enix wants to go. We can't risk our crew member being killed, even in battle, for unnecessarily. He shouldn't have to fight for his right to be on there. He's already proven that to you that he is that he is uh, that he's strong and capable. He shouldn't have to prove it again. He shouldn't have to prove it against his uh, his his uh, his his attacker and uh, he should not he will not be traveling aboard your ship and if you don't like that I can go straight to Vogoth and uh, we can have a chat about this right now okay. are you going more intimidation here or are you still trying to persuade mm, I can do I can do uh, I can do pers I can still try to persuade Okay, because the Vocat thing is like little on the edge of intimidation. That's why I'm asking. Well, I mean, I could do intimidation if that's what you want me to do. I I got it as well. I mean, that's all the same. It doesn't matter to me. I a roll is a roll. I'm a charisma based character with those uh, with those okay. things. So, so do do an intimidation I, I, with that one with with advantage. To Whisper you. It to me. Yep. Hey, hey, Brian. While this yep. is going on, could Sparky is watching? You know, the meat bags talk to each other. Could he? Could he? Um, <laughs> keep an <laughs> eye bag. on the. Uh, on the elder and see if he thinks that he's being honest, you know, if he's telling the truth about not knowing about this plot. So like an insight check, I guess. Yeah. Give me an insight check. I'm okay with that. All right. Whisper out in the public. Whisper. doesn't matter. Whisper to Whisper. me. Okay. All right. Okay. 
Um, Wayne, you're trying to do an insight through a translator because mm -hmm. obviously you don't speak his language. Okay. Um, it's. Oh, I am watching. I'm watching the body movements of the creature as he talks to the translator too. Right, it's not just all verbal kind of thing. Right. Yep. So I get that. Okay. Okay. So through the Get Yankee translator, um, it seems like he's being honorable and honest in his uh, in his answers back to you guys. Okay. Okay. All right. So back to Simon's third and final skill check on this thing. Um, you can see like the concerned look on his eyes. I don't know how they have like four or five, six, I don't know. And he pauses without saying anything for a minute. And he begins speaking and the gate Yankee tells you basically that you, you, you bring a good point. He doesn't want to raise the ire of Vocath. Uh, that would be a detriment to their future dealings. Um, he says, if you want to take Enix on your ship, you have the right to do that. He will still look into the rumor and deal with it appropriately, but you're free to take Enix uh, on your ship. Thank you, and we will. Because mechanically, you pass two of three skill challenges. Okay, okay. so that's done. And then, <laughs> okay. All right, so everybody's back on the second win, with the exception of Teddy, and I'll resolve that on our way there. Matter of fact, I may wait to see how far you get, whether there's something I'm doing that Teddy do offline or in next session. Okay. All right. So let me do this. Let me switch to the map that has the living tree on it. Let me make sure I didn't leave anything on there that I wasn't supposed to. And you guys are all on there. I think I've got everybody on there. So here we go. Moment of truth. So you guys should see all of your characters on the ship. Let me know if you don't. Yep. Okay. So just to remind you guys, the way these ships work, you guys picked up two more ballista, and that's why I've got three people on each one of them. Each one of them requires three people to operate it. Uh, you've also got one up here on the upper deck. That's uh, manned by three of the Hadazi shipmates. Uh, this one is operated by Grimzod and his two vampires. This one is operated by Commodore Crux, his first mate Flinch, and his uh, more veteran Hadazi shipmate here as well. I've got the rest of you guys up on the main deck. Uh, feel free to move yourself wherever else you would like to be if you don't want to be on the main deck. Uh, for right now, I've got those that aren't in the session. Blow Deck, Teddy, Vega, and Conch, along with Topola and Phil Ardra is the spell jammer down here. Okay. So feel free to move yourself wherever you want to be at during this journey, and I'll fill in the blanks about what happens on your way there. Sparky would probably like to be on the upper deck because he likes to keep an eye on where we're traveling. That seems like a good vantage point. Okay. And this is also the Treant here. He's a live Treant named Starbo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've shared it with you guys yet or not. Mm -hmm. Not a not a big talker, uh, but they are uh, 10 good-sized boulders that have been stashed close to him for if and when you guys encounter anything. Okay, so Simon, Enix, and Arnold, you guys good up, up top? Yeah, I'm considering. I don't get a lot yeah. of range, so either I need to go to... Uh... A ballista, or need to go find something else to do. Maybe go hang out with um, Alice in Wonderland down there. But you can, by all means, you can take the place of one of these folks that are manning the ballista if that's what you want. No, I don't particularly want to shoot anything. I just okay. don't have the. I just don't have the ability to do any shooting. Yeah, I'm happy where I am. I'll stay there. Okay. Okay. Enix, you and Arnold, you're good with where you are. Enix, you're not playing Arnold. Well, Wayne's playing Arnold, right? Yeah, I think Arnold would stay on the main deck with the other guys. Okay. Enix is going to stay on the main deck. Marigold went down below. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, I got to write this down.
Okay. You know what? I really need to resolve this thing with Teddy. So I may have you guys do rolls for me. Teddy gonna die. You know what? I'm, screw it. I'm gonna not worry about it because Teddy's not here. All right. So I tell you, it's about a five day journey through the Astral Sea to reach Cerixia space. Uh, on the second day, uh, you guys are notified by Phil Ardra, the spell jammer on your ship, uh, that she has been telepathically contacted by a Gith Yankee knight of Tunarath named Degaz. Uh, Phil Ardra and Degaz once traveled together as, as a mercenary company. And Degaz is actually nearby because you guys are passing through a section of the Astral Sea that's known to be a. Uh, a known patrolling lane for the Gith Yankee. And again, nobody, nobody's playing to get Gizarai, so that's not that big of an issue. But she basically tells Captain Crux that uh, Degas wishes to uh, speak with Commander Crux and Fel Ardra as you guys are passing through this area. So unless you guys object, Crux will allow this. Are you guys okay with that? You guys want yeah. to try to persuade, talk, get more details, anything like that? So we're looking to recruit some more mercenaries to our fleet. Is that the idea? Uh, she basically tells it the Gaz, the Gith Yankee Knight, wants to meet with Crux and her. Does not know the reason why. Okay. But but Phil Ardra and the Gaz have uh, history together. They know each other. Is this a reputable person, or I mean, obviously he's a knight, but. Well, I mean, Enix, you would definitely know, being from this area, that you know, Gith Yankee uh, aren't typically like the good people. But as long as you don't piss them off, they don't piss you off. They're they're more worried about hunting down uh, Gizarai and uh, mind flayers. Yeah, don't talk about your illicit, don't talk about your illicit friends. Okay, All right. Those are like the sworn enemies of the Gith Yankee. Right. So as long as you didn't have any of those on board or harboring any of them, or befriending any of them, then typically shouldn't be an issue. Okay. So there's no danger in missing, you know, meeting with them. Well, I mean, Phil Arger would tell you, don't piss her off, because... Right. No, I'm not. <laughs> We're not walking warm. into a trap. Yeah. I mean, the chances of this one Get Yankee Knight attacking anybody, when you got a full armada of like 21 ships flying through here, is very slim, but that doesn't mean that if you piss her off in some way that she won't go back and get her own reinforcements. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Gith Yankee are normally not ever a target and or at war with the uh, Xerixian Empire. They kind of leave each other alone uh, because it's kind of like the, uh, the U.S. and Russia. Both of them are like threatening the nuclear war or whatever, so they don't fuck with each other. So the chances well, of them the chances of them helping us are pretty slim then or or what? I mean are they are they like the Ru Russia and the US where we're sort of hostile and we work through proxies? It's very rare for the Gith Yankee to join any kind of like a proxy war or uh join a coalition or anything else. They're pretty much on their own. They but always they might be around. willing they might be willing to help us indirectly without providing troops and ships and all of that. Well, you can have that conversation with the gas when she shows up if you want. Okay. Okay. But like I said, just from history wise, they normally don't join in any kind of coalitions like this, uh, mainly because they are quite powerful by themselves and kind of hard to get along with. That makes sense? Mm hmm Okay. All right. Box text time. All right, so silvery fog catches the light of distant stars and coalesces into clouds that vaguely resemble faces as inscrutable, inscrutable, inscrutable as they are enormous. Uh, perhaps they are the visage of gods watching over you, or perhaps they are merely figments of the astral plane, stray thoughts given form. None of that matters, however, as a distant roar draws your attention to one of the cloudy visages from whose mouth emerges a large red dragon. Riding the dragon is a knight clad in golden armor, their face hidden behind a fearsome visor shaped like a dragon's scowling visage. 
The large red dragon circles over several of the ships before it uh, turns its sight upon the second wind, the ship you're on. It makes a beeline right for the ship, circles one more time, and then lands on the deck. I'm assuming nobody is trying to shoot the damn thing to start a third world war. Really? I don't have a red dragon in here? Well, son of a bitch. I suck as a DM. Red dragon. Okay, I may have to drop a solar dragon in here. Just as a placeholder. Night, the dragon lands on the deck. The knight quickly jumps off, raises his visor, looks around. Uh, I'm assuming Fel Ardra can temporarily come up deck. I guess I should have asked that to begin with. Do you guys want to let her come up? I'll say at this point, at least one or two of the people have learned enough on how to temporarily take over the spell jamming helm, if you would like. Any of you guys want to volunteer for that? Or I mean, let uh, Simon Simon would Simon could volunteer for that. Okay, because I could have one of the other uh, PCs that aren't here do that if you'd rather stay up top. That's why I'm no, asking. I, I'm learning. I'm learning how to do it. I want to be capable for uh, when and if uh, we drop one off for Urbo. Okay. All right. So I'll let you trade places with Phil Ardra if you want. Sure. It, Ardra is uh, is um. Alice in, Wonder Alice in Wonderland? Oh, okay. Yep, the hooded one right there. Well, I guess I could share her name since you guys have obviously met her like a thousand times at this point. Do you want me to go down into the into the into where the helm is? or Yeah, right here is where the spell drumming helm is. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Arbor Knight lifts the visor of her helm, revealing the stern visage of the Gith Yankee. I am the guys. A knight of Tunarath, she says in a haughty tone. By order of Vlaketh the Undying, queen of the Astral Sea, I declare that you are guilty of the crime of trespassing. As your punishment is my solemn duty to de decapitate your captain. So, which one of you dung eaters commands this barge? Anybody want to chime in? Well, wouldn't the person that commands the barge chime in? <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting you guys decide if you want to chime in first before Commander Crux does. Crux can nope. handle himself. Okay. He says, I am the captain and I have no part. And then the, the Yankee holds up and I'm sorry. It's all right. Starts laughing. The bad joke on my part. Looks over at Phil Ardra. I wish you swift passage through Her Majesty's realm. My dragon are hunting mind flares, have you? Have you seen any? Say anything to the other? Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I, Sparky correct. has no knowledge of any mind flares. And so she turns to Phil Ardra, and they start having a conversation back and forth. In what does Tiefling speak? Is it infernal? Is it infernal. Anyone else here speak infernal? Um, oh, good question. I, I do. Who's Simon I? does. Simon oh, Simon's, does. Simon's down below. Yeah, he still speaks okay. it. You asked who speaks it. I'm telling you, I speak let me, it. Uh, let me check if uh, anybody within earshot speak it. They're not speaking it, though, right? They're speaking infernal. Correct. I speak celestial, but not infernal. Let me check Arnold. I doubt he does, but nope. None of uh, none of my guys speak it. Marigold and Enix do not. Hey then. All right, so it's all on Phil Ardra. Uh, they both exchange a couple phrases back and forth. Both of them chuckle a little bit. And then they get Yankee hands Phil Ardra something. And they turns back to the rescue, speaking in common. Says, "Give my regards to the Xerxian Empire. May they uh, they they fall swiftly, and we'll take over the realm soon." Climbs back onto his uh, red dragon and flies off. Phil Ardra approaches the group and hands over a two 
vials. And she tells you that uh, as a gift from, crap, what was her name? Uh, Vlacketh the Undying. We have two vials of oil of sharpness. So a free gift for whoever needs those. Oil of sharpness. I have to look it up. What does that do? I think it just gives you more damage on your weapon. Good question. I don't remember. Sharpness. Hopefully that's in the compendium. Because I did not make a handout for it. Let's see. Oil of lubricating. Oh, sharpness. Ooh, it's very rare. This clear gelatinous oil sparkles with tiny, ultra thin silver shards. The oil can coat one slashing or piercing weapon or up to five pieces of slashing or piercing ammunition. Applying the oil takes one minute. For one hour, the coated item is magical and has a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls. Holy that's, shit. That's not uh -huh. nothing. <laughs> I don't I don't attack using those kind of weapons. Uh and like Sparky the, Sparky certainly has a crossbow. That that could easily apply to. We could put and, that on one sword and four pieces of uh, ammunition. Annex, what do you fight with? Huh? What do you fight with? Great sword. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, put it on your him... sword. Put it on your sword. Put it on there. Wait, put it on. We have two. Uh, we have two potions, though, right? We have two. Correct. So, so Enix one weapon one and three. five pieces of ammunition, or two weapons. Yeah, good question. I don't know if it makes sense for Sparky to do five pieces of ammunition if we could do two weapons for two other characters. Because Arnold Arnold uses a bladed weapon, right? He uses a mace. Oh, okay. So he doesn't do piercing. Well, you might as well do might as well do the pieces of ammunition then. Okay. I can take, take one. one each. Yeah, a bottle each, right? One potion each. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have that. Okay, so it takes one, one hour take, to apply. No, it takes one minute to apply. It, it lasts, lasts, for one, for, an hour. lasts for one hour. <laughs> so don't use it until we're in the middle of the combat or getting ready to go into combat, I should say. Yeah, don't wait until we're in combat to do it because that's yes. going to take a minute. <laughs> yeah, that'll take a hot minute, as they say. Okay, so cool. we're cool on that. You got a mark on your character sheet so I don't forget it later. Yep. Okay. All right. You guys continue on as the red dragon disappears more into the mist within the astral sea. You emerge from the silver haze of the astral sea and enter a wild space system illuminated by a white star off in the distance. It's at this point where you guys will need to use Aarakocra to use a wild space orrery to plot a course for the Imperial Citadel. All the uh, Spelljamming Helm uh, folks, at least most of them in the fleet, have like the sending spell. So that's how they kind of communicate with each other. Uh, okay. Simon, do you have that? Otherwise, the message will be coming to Felardra. The sending spell? Uh, yeah, the sending spell. Um, I do not. Okay. You know, to make this simple, I'm going to say all the helms have that ability to it. That's probably not how it is in the book, but I'm going to say that because it makes it easier. Um, so that the Aarakocra now have the wild space orrery, and they're kind of directing, they're like the head of the armada uh, within this space and leading the way towards the temple itself. It actually makes so much more logical sense that the helm itself would have the sending anyway. Right. It does. So I'm glad I said it that way. <laughs> You're the uh, uh, do, do, do. Oh, Wow. This says the Citadel, which is connected to Xerixis, the actual star, by a beam of light 300 million miles long. <laughs> and the characters are 100 million miles, one day's travel by spell jamming ship. For the Imperial Citadel, with with the when their fleet enters Xerxia space, okay. So when the characters come within one mile of the Imperial City, read. Okay, let me switch to this other map. So basically, we came in at the edge of the solar system and are moving in toward the habitable planets. Is that what you're saying? Correct. We came at a light speed out at the periphery. Correct. 
So what's what's on this splash screen right here basically is the the Citadel, whatever you want to call it here. So let me do this. I'm going to move this thing that's on the map layer so you can see what I'm trying to. Hey, look at there. I got other words that I need to hide. Pigs in space, I see. Oh, pig space pants. Pigs in space pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to look up space pants again. Sorry. <laughs> no. I promise right. I won't post it, though. <laughs> so this is the Citadel, and you, you're not this close, obviously, uh, but this is what you can see from a distance. At the top of this little thing, there's uh, some kind of a magical swoosh of energy. That's going towards the actual star in the center of this uh, this wild space realm. So there's some kind of tie to the star and this citadel. This entire citadel here is basically shaped like a giant moth, if you can imagine that. And uh, there are two sections of docks, which you can see from far off distance, where you've got like a crap, what do you call those uh, things that pirates look through? I'm drawing a blank what they're called. Tele a telescope. Uh, the other name for the telescope, uh, regardless, yeah, you're looking through a telescope. Um, over here is going to be more of the star moths. They're, they're little armada ships like this thing. Uh, this side is going to have a different kind of dock with more of the regular uh, hodgepodge, different kind of, kind of ships as well. You can also see something that looks like a gigantic wild space orrery hovering on this section of it along with this giant citadel right here in the center. Okay. All right. When you guys come within one mile of the Imperial Citadel, uh, at this point, again, you let me know if and when you want to use this oil of sharpness, but uh, you guys are within one mile. And so far, let me read before I say this. Ahead, you see an elegant crystal-spired city built on the back of an asteroid shaped like a moth with shipyards sprouting from its wings. Atop the moth's head stands a magnificent temple. A beam of light stretches from the crystal atop the temple toward the bright star of Xerixus. An armada of crystal-winged ships patrols the region between your fleet and the citadel. The closest enemy ship is approximately about a thousand feet away. So it seems like right now the Ar Ar Xerixian armada has not noticed you, or you're still about one mile away. So you guys need to decide. Oh, this is where we're going ship to ship if you guys want to do that. And I think we, well. What are our allies doing? Rob said in there that I'm not, probably not going to do it. And I think I shared with you guys the ship to ship combat in this thing, in my opinion, sucks. So I'm probably going to narrate this portion of it as a Zerixian Armada sees you coming and starts to form a line heading towards your Armada. All right, so let's switch back to this one just so I can... Keep you guys squared away on your ship. And talk about the mechanics here. So are so sorry, are we gonna fight ship to ship or are we just gonna kind of narrate There's, through that until we get to the actual city? There's 21 of your ships. Um you guys can quickly Determine that there are more than 21 ships, not a lot more, but a few more than 21 ships of the Star Moth uh, flying your way. There is no way around any kind of a, a battle with this. Um, I am going to do a little Fear the Mind narration of this so you guys aren't battling ship to ship. But there will be meta knowledge or spoilers. Uh, there will be a ship boarding you guys, and that's when you guys will get a chance to actually fight. So it's not ship to ship. You guys cool with that? Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. All right. So it says we have three rounds before the ship actually reaches a boarding position with you. So let's do. If you're a thousand feet apart and the battle begins, the Xerixia, to which uh, several folks on your ship will recognize that as basically like the uh, the marquee ship of the fleet, the one that uh, actually Prince Zealoth uh, appeared on when you guys were at Vocas Arena. Uh, that is the flagship of the fleet, and it's going to be making a beeline right for your, the second wind, almost like he knows 
that it's you that are on this ship. You have three yeah. rounds before they board or reach to a boarding position on your ship. Okay. So during this battle, there are ballistas going off, mangonels flying back and forth. Um, you'll see several of the R2 ships with the lampreys kind of land, strike into the star moth ships with jaws upon that. Squid ships doing the same thing. Scorpions reaching out with their tentacles and their, their pincers grabbing stuff. And there is basically you're in the din of battle at this point. Um, I'm going to roll randomly for three shots from both you guys and them just to see what happens, to see if anyone rolls a, a crit. Uh, I need one of you get, each of you guys roll one d20 just to see if any of them are crits. I'll let you guys do the rolling instead of me. Out in the open? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, no crits, so nothing extra. But the ships all take damage, but they're all still going towards until eventually the star moth comes up next to you and they are ready to board. So you can roll initiative at this point. Let's see. Layer. Token layer. No map layer. At this point, I'll say that uh, Simon, you and Phil Ardrick can switch positions. Obviously, you're not going to be down running the ship during this. I'm assuming you want to be in the, the fray of things. Wow, those are some terrible initiative rolls. Is that really a zero, Enix? Right? <laughs> How does or that Enix, work? Sorry. <laughs> did, you seriously, did you seriously have a zero because of a minus bonus or a yeah. negative bonus? Wow. Yeah. That ain't cool. That ain't cool at all. <laughs> okay, make sure I got them all here. Okay. Let's roll initiative for them. I am not going to have all the characters that are on deck um, roll initiative. I've got a different way of handling what happens with them. Some of you guys may be able to roll for them depending on what happens here. But I'm going to kind of narrate everything else. Okay, everybody in? You got both uh, Arnold and Marigold in there? Yeah, I think so. Do you see Arnold, right? I see him. I'll put Phil Arger back down here. Sort this. All right. So, one minute to strategize at the top. Go ahead and discuss among yourselves how you want to handle this. So, uh, real quick, the stern cat, what's it? Wait, what's it called? The stern cast? The upper it's section like, over here. Sorry, Stern Castle. I had to move my screen. That is above the ship coming it's in. It's above. It's basically a, on top of this section here. Right. And so the ship coming in is at the same level as the main deck. Correct. Okay. Yeah, they're about to board this section. Anybody got any area of effect stuff that we could take out a bunch of them at once? Um, Marigold's got some... Uh, she's got fairy fire. So... As far as area stuff, that's about all she's got. Right. And Enix has got a couple of spells that would help. Um, he has... Uh, frost fingers. So that's like a cone attack. 15 foot, though. Yeah, I mean, Arnold can do... Mm, can some area control with spirit guardians and kind of wade into them, I suppose. I have lightning. I have that wand of lightning bolt. Oh, the wa the famous wand of lightning. Can you position yourself to take out several of them? Perhaps maybe you should go with that. And you go first anyway out of our group, and then we can respond to what what happens with that. Well, it depends on how they position themselves, too. True. And but they don't, they don't know you have it, so. No. I'll just say these appear to be getting ready to board and fight with melee weapons. 
Everybody up here has longbows getting ready to shoot. Oh, I didn't even see that over there because I know I had to shrink my screen too to see him. Screen. You guys good? Okay. I think for the first round, yeah, we're good enough. Okay, so den of war is a mechanical thing here. So at a nit count of 20, I'm going to roll a d20 for the enemies. Uh, one of you guys can roll me a d20 for all the non-PCs that are in the fight. And this will help resolve how we handle everybody else with one roll. Well, technically a couple rolls after that, but the first roll is a d20. Okay, I guess Don's going first. And then I'll roll one. 15 is solid. I'll take that. Yeah. Woo. Okay. All right. So that means the side with a higher number takes half damage from a sample attack. Sample attack can be rolled by one creature only once, i.e. Grimzod, Crux, Honor Guard, uh, the Astro Elf Warriors, whatever. All right. So one of you guys roll, uh, decide who wants to roll damage. For which one of the non-PC guys? And I'll do that. Commodore Crux, Grimzod, one of the Vampirates, uh, Flinch. Well, who you know does the most damage? That's the that's the question. Do we have do we have access to their character sheets? Hey, don't worry so much about who does the most damage because you can only do it once. I mean, technically, Grimzod and Crux are probably the most powerful people on deck right now. So okay. if you had to pick that, we can use them first if you want. Well, Don, why don't you roll it and pick one of those two, since you rolled the attack as well. Okay. What am I rolling? All you got to do is just pick one of them. Oh. Then Rims I'll do the Crux. Rims or Crux are the two most powerful on our yeah. side. Well, I, let's go with Crux then. Okay. All right. Let's keep in mind, you've already used his attack, so you can't use it again for the other rounds. We still got Grimzod, though, so we'll save Grimzod. I'm going to have him throw a force grenade. And they take all this since you rolled higher. Oh, uh. Grenades are good. 21 force damage. And all these guys here. Sweet. So hold on while I go and update all their things. Okay, so on the first round, they all take 21. And everybody on your team takes half of that. Yeah. 11 points, or 10 points. So all now the, you know how the math works. All the NPCs, you mean? Yes. Yeah. All right. So that's how it works. That's why I didn't say it up front, because whatever damage you do, you take half of that. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. All right. And then, crap, I'm up next. So, Brian, um, we didn't actually discuss this, but Oil of Sharpness, is that out of play for this particular combat since we didn't say we were doing it? I, I'm okay. You can go ahead and apply it now if you want. I, I do not want to. I'm going to save Yeah, that. I think I'll save mine too, actually. Yeah. All right. All my, all my warriors are up. They're all going to jump aboard. And I'll say these are the three that are going to attack with you guys. All right, so just start down here. This guy's going to attack Simon. Here she longsword. Wah! No. Okay, and they make two of them, so one more. Hey, look at that horrible throw. <laughs> Uh, next one's going to be. Do you, want, do you want to know if that hit? Uh, yeah, does that hit? I'm sure it does, <laughs> that did, right? That did. That did not hit, Brian. And it Let was me a check crit. The handbook. It was a crit, you know. Uh, two of them add Darnold. Oh no! Oh, oh Arnold, shit! I'm, I'm pretty sure that hit. Well, one of them definitely hits. Uh, let me check it. No, I'm not set up accurately. So that's six plus ten. Sixteen. So, uh, Seventeen is his AC, so they both hit. So I'm using that, Brian. I, I GM'd to rolled it, but I'm using that on that first hit. Okay. Which what makes it a 22, right? I have to roll it again. Uh, well, how many attacks did he have? He had two attacks. Um, 23 yeah. and 22 were both on Arnold. 
Yeah, I guess so. if you're going to count the second attack instead as a second roll, if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Everything yeah. crit. Okay, so it's only one hit for nine total. And here's a second attack. And that applies to only one attack, correct? The silvery barbs? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right, so I still get a second attack at normal. Oh, shit. Oh, are you kidding oh, me? Oh, who, oh, who is oh. that again? Did you, is that against Arnold, too? Yeah, both. Yeah, it was two attacks on Arnold. So six oh. plus 16. Uh, just, give me, just give me the total damage. 16 plus 13. I don't do extra damage on the on the extra stuff. So 16 and 13. That's 29. Holy shit. Plus the nine he did in the first attack? Uh, plus 12 on the first attack. Oh, 12. Okay, you originally said nine. I wasn't sure. All right, so 12 plus... Sorry, what was the first number? <laughs> 12 plus 29. Oh, oh shit. Not, that's not cool. 41. Oh. Yeah. Arnold is reeling. He's still <laughs> up, but he's he's reeling. He's and definitely this, bloodied, as they say. And this guy is also going to <laughs> try to take freaking Arnold out in round one. This is awesome. I won't be Bach. 18. Uh, 14. That misses. Uh, 18 hits. 18 if, if it's 17. Correct, which I think it must be. How much damage? 17? Yeah, he's uh, he's down. Okay, and I'll say half of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Half of them are part of the den of these guys. Three of them are going to shoot at somebody. Uh, one at Simon. And two at Enix. Longbow at Simon. And then Jesus two at Christ. Enix. Oh, yeah, his yeah. AC is 17. You got to meet it to beat it. So I meet it, met it, so I beat it. No, no he I, has I, it I to met it, it <laughs> so I beat it. Okay. <laughs> nice try, though, Don. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Heads I win, tails you lose. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, crap. I'm just not realizing how horrible you guys wrote it uh, at initiative. Yeah, right. we're, we are sucky. Yeah. Okay, what is he going to do? Sparky's thinking about getting in a lifeboat and getting out of here. You saw that, Brian. I, I've got a uh, shield up now. Ah, okay. All right, I got you. All right, so it doesn't hit then. Yeah. Uh, one second while I measure. Wow, that's pretty far. Is that right? No, oh, I got my squares off again. I don't know how I'm going to do that. So that's 30 feet right there. He disappears and reappears right there. And I'll say he's part of this first den of attacking everybody here. All right, Simon, you're up. Uh, all right. So I am going to, I'm going to have to attack the ones that are currently sitting in front of me because that's just what I'm going to have to do. Uh, so I am going to reach out with my booming blade. I can remember how I do this. Um, yeah. So I'm going to reach out, uh, hit with my Thunder Gauntlet, the one that's directly to the west of him. Um, is that true? I don't think that's true. I think I'm going to move here. And then I'm going to smash the one that's between me and Arnold. Oh, wait a minute, Arnold. You're down, right? That's correct. All right. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm sorry. Arnold is is down. Sorry. I forgot that I'm Arnold for a second. <laughs> Welcome to my world. All yeah. right. I'm going to reach down and... Uh, give Arnold a little bit of healing. Six. All right. And then I am going to... I don't really have a lot of. I don't really have a lot of, a lot of choices here. I'm in a wand of lightning bolts. Oh no, I can't do that because I already did that. 
Oh, I can't do that as a bonus action. Oh, yes, I can. So I did that spell as a bonus action by using a, um, a sorcery point on it to make it a bonus action cast. And I am now going to shoot to the north with the Wand of Lightning Bolts. One charge. Uh, and that charge looks a little bit like this. Come on, where are you? Oh, there. Boom. 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 Come on, there we go. Don't make me say boom a third time. <laughs> Is that on these two I'm assuming? Pardon? Is that on these two to the north yeah. of you, I guess? The, okay. two, the two to the north. Okay. So they both have a dexterity save, 30 on a fail, 15 on a, 50 on a pass. Guys. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. So 30 points each. All right. Well, I think they are both very, 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 very bloodied. Well, <laughs> they took, they've taken 51 points of damage so far. And they're still up. I think I've got that right. They took 21 from the force grenade, right? They are very, 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 very <laughs> bloody. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Anything else, uh, Simon? I've used my action, used my bonus action. I'm not going to use any movement. So, yeah, that is it. Okay. Uh, Marigold. Marigold is going to come up. And um, he's up now, isn't Arnold back up? Well, he's she's got a couple of points. Oh, okay. He's, yeah, okay. he's got to stand up on his turn, but he's healed. Okay. Yeah, she's got to come in through this one. There's no door right there where you just moved to. That's the stairs going up to the upper. Right, uh, no. Um, so she's going to give him an extra 10. Oh, that's nice. What a sweet little Karen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then she's going to back off back down here. And so it's 5, 10 to here. Difficult terrain to move to them, 20. What? She went up these stairs. No, those are stairs going down to the lower deck. These are stairs going up to here. She has to come through this door and then move through one of these spaces to get to there. Well, she was here because that's right. where I moved her after the battle started. Yeah, but right. the doors the doors right here, Don. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she, she shouldn't have to go up here. She can just move next to Enix and then heal Arnold, right? Yeah, that's all she wanted to do. She just okay. wanted to move up and heal and then move back down. Yeah, so it's just theater of the mind. I make sure we're clear. So this is the door going in and out from that section you're in. You're in an enclosed section over here. You're not on deck. Does that make sense, Marigold? Uh uh. -huh. Okay. This isn't on deck. No, that's like behind the closed doors. But she can yeah. pop in. She can pop in and out of the door, though, right? And this right here is the roof to it. If that makes sense. Oh. Okay. Now it does. I. I. Once the battle started, I put her here because I thought she that was on deck. Okay. Well, she's just behind the door over here. So she can still get there right here, heal him, and stuff back in. I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. Okay. That's right, that, it for, that it for Marigold? That's it for Marigold. Okay. Okay. I think Sparky. this is all dov double, like the distance is not correct, correct, right? It's double what it should be. Okay, so I think Sparky can move here to the edge of the Stern Castle, and looking down, he should be able to target these two guys, right? Okay. Yeah, I'll follow right. that. Because technically, he's like, you know, right here. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, he's sort of up yeah. above everybody, though, right? At least, I don't right. know, whatever, 10 feet or something. Okay. Yep. Um, he's going to shoot them, uh, each one with a hand crossbow. He gets two attacks, so. Okay. And he's going to do, what's he going to do? Give me a sec. Okay, yeah, he's just going to do that. All right, here we go. Oh, Jesus. And then 16 was the second one. 16 on which one? Uh, I'll, I'll start from the south and go north. So the first, the miss was on the guy to the south, and then 16 was on the guy to the north. By this Arnold. One? Yeah, the 16, is on, the 16 is on this one. Okay. 16 for 10, and that one drops. Cool. And I think he's just going to stay. Well, let me see if he has any bonus actions that would be useful. I don't think he really does at this point. Is he ranged? Obviously. Sparky is ranged only. No, no, he has. Um, he has the ability to fight melee too. 
No, the only reason I ask is because uh, you might want to go prone if you're going to stay at distance. Make it harder for the range guys to. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he'll, he'll, after he shoots, he'll drop back down uh, prone so that it's hard for somebody down below to target him. Okay, move your token sideways. All right. First one came out sideways. There we go. Okay. And that is uh, it for Sparky. Hey, okay. Arnold. Arnold's going to stand up. Hook up. All right, there we go. And Arnold's pissed. So he's going to strike the guy in front of him with his mace. And let me find. Oh, sorry, wrong sheet. Too many sheets open. All right. Arnold's with a mace. Oh, I rolled it to you. Do you see the roll? Yep. Put it out in the open. I won't count that one. Yep. What's that? Roll it out in the open. Oh, oh son of a bitch. <laughs> Thank you for that, Brian. I do appreciate that. <laughs> nice. Okay. So okay. it's probably not set up correct. That should be 12 total, right? It's uh, blah, 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 blah. It should be 1d6 plus 2 base damage. So 1d6 plus 2 and then 1d6. 1D6. I, I think yeah, it's 12. You, okay, so you count the bonus. Okay, gotcha. So 12. Base. The, the the crit the max damage is always base weapon damage. So whatever the max is for the for the weapon. I understand. Okay, things. yeah. So that is twelve then. Yeah, well, twelve was enough because, like I said, they were very, 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 very bloodied from gotcha. the from the okay. wand of lightning. And let me see if he has any bonus actions that would be useful. Not right. Well, he's going to. Um, oh, that's an action. Never mind. He's going to uh, use Healing Word on himself. Which I think you're allowed to do, right? Oh, no, wait. You have to see the creature. Does that mean you can use it on yourself or not? Yeah, you can use Healing Word on yourself. Okay, just making sure. So he's going to use Healing Word as his bonus action. Seven more healing. Yeah. And that should be it for him. Okay. Mr. Zero. Mr. Come on up, Zero. All right. So this guy right here is going to take uh, some of this. Maybe not. Uh, He'll take that second one, though. He thought about taking that second one. Yeah, that's correct. So he says, ouch. But he's still standing. Yeah. Is that it for Annex? Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, next up, ship casualties. On initiative count zero, at least one ship from each side is destroyed. Have one PC roll a D20 to represent the Doom Space Coalition versus a roll by the DM to represent the Zarixian Armada. The side with a lower number loses an additional ship that round. All right, so uh, Don did the first one. So someone else roll me a d20. You want to do it, Rob? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you just keep on rolling just like that, my friend. Just like that. Come on, roll a one. Roll a one. <laughs> you rolled oh, a 17. Roll. Roll 17. <laughs> Shit. Okay. All right, so since I did a crit fail, not one ship, not two ships, but three ships are destroyed on the Xerxian Empire side. So let me make note of that. Paper tigers. They're paper yeah. tigers. They're on the run now. Okay. Uh, one minute strategize. Go. Um, Kill them. So the guys uh, over to the far left, are they doing anything? There was the ones that shot uh, the bows. So they, they can't shoot, shoot that mango now because you're too close. But they okay. got their long bows out. So they'll be keep, they'll continue to shoot at us, okay. right? And the distance is whatever I'm going to measure pl- divided by two, right? Correct. Let me see if I can okay. fix that real quick. On how I managed to do that? Too far for a hand crossbow, I think. Okay. I say we clear the main deck and then head over to the other ship and take out the archers. Yeah. I don't know that there's. What do you think, Simon? Do you have anything yep. special you can do? 
Well, I don't have any ranged. Yeah. Except for, except well, for my yeah. except for my wand. And I don't want to use my wand unless I can hit at least three, usually. I mean, I took those two out because they were pissing us off. Yeah. Okay. Jump enough. over there real quick and go after them. Yeah. Because there's only one, two, four still on deck with us, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Who's this guy right here next to uh, Commander Crooks? Not the ape, but the other side. Is he a good guy or a bad guy? A bad guy that disappeared and reappeared right there next to Crux. Oh, he's a bad guy. Yeah, he was okay. over here on the ship. Oh, so he might be trouble. Mm. All right. I'm thinking of spirit guardians. What do you think? Arnold has it. Yeah, and I would. I would step there? right. I would step right in the middle of those guys, Arnold, and spirit I, guardian I it up. That. I will do that next round, assuming I'm still standing. And don't take another 80 points of damage or whatever I took. <laughs> well, before someone does it, you know, if you step on this, there's a chance you could fall through. This is not like a. Yeah, I wondered. Yeah, on. I wondered that because I was considering flanking the guy in front of Simon, but then I worried that I would fall through that grating. So it is it is not stable. Yeah, it's like that cargo hold, like a, a thin like lattice. Paperboard lattice. Yeah. yeah. OK. All right. Gotcha. Good to know. Thank you for clarifying that. OK. You guys good? And I did update the grid, so it should now be reflecting accurately. Okay, Dinobor. what I say? Oh, yeah, D20s for each of us. Uh, first roll straight up. The side with the higher number takes half damage from us. <laughs> um, so they are the only ones that take damage at time. No one else has died. Okay, uh, D20, who hasn't rolled one yet? Uh, I guess that would be Sparky, so I can roll it. Hey, I did better than one this time. Do I, do I need to whisper it or out in the open? Out in the open is fine. Damn! Yeah, guys. baby. All right, so do you guys do full damage uh, on a group? Uh, who do you want to roll for damage this time? Last time it was Crux and his grenade. You want Grimzod to do something? Yeah, let's do Grimzod this time. Okay. Let me pull up his character sheet. Best thing for him to use is going to be he's going to use energy drain as a holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Grimzad, you're my favorite. Fin you're my favorite guy now. Wow! One yeah, of you guys should have tried to attack him long time ago. Up, that's not set up properly either because it's plus forty. Forty ten. Oh, holy shit! It's seventy five points damage. of damage to everybody that he hit. <laughs> holy uh, shit! Hey, you guys remember the flip side of that, right? Oh, we take half. Yeah, Correct. our guys, our guys take half, right? And that not the flip side. Correct. Yeah. Holy shit! So, everybody, are you guys still good with me doing this a crit? How bad is that for you guys? Well, I mean, I don't know the HPs for our hit our NPCs, so I don't really know how badly they're already hit. Yeah. Yeah, whatever yeah. though i mean it it's yeah it's if it is, it is. Yep. yeah we got it we got to kill the enemy so i would i'd say take it yeah by the way that was an awesome roll there was three tens in there natural roll yeah good job brian hey you're welcome <laughs> uh, oh wow i didn't kill this guy he's got to be hurting though yeah he is he's hurting uh, so it's going to be all these guys that are near him. Uh, that one's on the other side, so you can't get to him. So since we picked him, basically took out those two guys. This guy is looking very, not quite as bloody as the other guys were, but he's he's pretty bad off. Okay. And then the rest of you guys, all close to Grimzod. Uh, from the bow is over here. We'll take half of that. So what it was, 35 plus 40, 75 minus, so half of that's 37. 37 points. Holy shit. Okay, Crux is still alive. Who is that? Is that friendly guy? Crux is your hippo man, the captain of the ship. No, I'm sorry. I was clicking in it. This Grimzod. guy. Grimzod is the pirate guy. That's like a... That's a more skilled veteran Hedozy. Friendly of, uh, or enemy? Friendly. That's part of Crux's ship. Okay. 
And he is looking like on death's door. This guy is. And so is his first mate, Flinch. Um, this guy drops. And this guy's going to drop. Okay, that's a den of war. Astro Elf Warriors. Who do I have left? I got this guy. I know his compadres are dying, but he's going to stay in it and try to hit Enix. He's got to be looking pretty rough, too, doesn't he? Yeah, but he's hoping to make you look pretty rough. Yeah. So, hey, Harar. Wow, that's awesome. Harar. Ooh, he, he stabs himself in the foot. <laughs> Brian, uh, you're his, rolling like a champ tonight. Just keep yeah. that up. His he morale. He accidentally, he accidentally nutted himself on that second hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just smashed himself accidentally right in the sack. Demasculated. His morale is gone. All right, so I'll say half of them did that. So two of these are still going to be able to shoot arrows at somebody. One. So one's going to be at Enix. And the furthest one back. No, oh, Sparky, you are prone, right? Yeah. Okay. So the other one's going to be at Arnold. He wouldn't oh. try to hit Sparky anyway? Not nah, if he's prone. They're not that dumb. These guys are veteran warriors. They're going to try to hit someone that's standing up. So, first one to Enix. Longbow. God! Sure. Look at he that! his buddy right in the back of the head. And now exactly. I'll probably, I'll probably crit on Arnold again. So you've already had two crits tonight. <laughs> Three. Three. Arnold, yeah. Yeah. That's nice. I'm making up for it now, that's for sure. Ryan, didn't that first one hit this guy right in the back of the head? Hey, Jason. I'll make him do a deck save. DC 10. <laughs> Ah, you got a minute to beat it. Ha ah, ha. He doesn't get hit. All right. But that's all my guys doing the attacking. Oh, uh, now the end gets to go. Well, after Grimzod just totally uh, obliterated those guys, I'm not so sure you even need the Trent anymore. He needs to take out the archers on the, on the other ship. Yep, I'll let him do that. Uh, do I have his character sheet open? Doesn't he have boulders? He has boulders he can throw, right? Or something? Yep. Yeah, I've had 10 of them up there. I think that's what I said at the start of things. So He's got those arrows, too. Rock. One target. 15. Wow, that's a horrible attack roll. Hey, it misses. Okay. That Didn't guy. they put those barrels up there, too, Brian? What happened to those barrels? Barrels of... We had something combustible. Didn't we, yeah, didn't we have um, fire fire stuff up there? That's what those barrels are. I think it's flaming pitch. If he hits it anywhere near them, it'll burn all of them up. Oh, it was alchemy fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's even that, better. that stuff is nasty. Okay. Well, well, you guys remember that on his next turn. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this guy is still alive. Oh, what does he want to do here? Because he did not like getting hit by Grimzod. That sucked. Uh, he, let me double check his character sheet if he can do this again. Gotta screw up the last time he did this. Oh, I whispered it. Okay. So, well, he's gonna continue to attack. Well, he, I don't want to make it part of the din. He's going to be attacking one of you guys, but screw it. He's going to try to take out Commander Crux since he's right there in front of him. Uh, Longsword. <laughs> Longsword. Oh, that's a good one. So 17 slashing on Crux. Crux is not looking so good, folks. Okay, Simon. All right, so I'm going to punch the one that's directly in front of me. Uh, so I'm doing that, not at advantage, 16. If it hits, the person takes 14 damage plus another. Yeah, the first one hits. Plus, so it takes 14 plus 10 because I booming bladed it. Okay, so 24 total, what we're saying, yeah. right? Okay. 24 total. And okay. then I'm using my, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and I'm using my new uh, telekinesis feature which allows me to do a telekinetic shove as a bonus action. 
and I'm pushing him back five feet. DC 16 strength save. Ooh, I like it. Uh, strength save. Hey, okay. so does that mean it doesn't move at all? Is that how that works? Yeah, it means it doesn't okay. move at all. Okay. So just so that you know in the future, Ryan, I will cast Booming Blade like that, use that as my bonus action to push them away, and as soon as they move closer to hit me, they take the secondary damage from the Booming Blade. Nice. I mean, bad. I don't like it. <laughs> All right, that's me. All right, Marigold. Okay, Marigold is going to come out. And she's going to uh, put her fairy fire up here on those archers. And she should be able to get every one of them. Okay, that's a save for all of them, right? Deck save. All right, starting at the top and then going counterclockwise. Deck saves, right? Yeah, deck saves. One, two, three, four, five. See, so first one, a third one. So this one's glowing. Give him a yellow dot. Yeah, a yellow dot. All the yellow dots are the ones that are glowing, which basically yeah. gives you advantage on the attacks. Okay. Yep. Anything else on a marigold? Um, this is an enemy, right? Correct. Um. Yeah, I guess she'll stay there. I'm not sure. Uh, she's if she backs away, she's can she back away without an opportunity to attack? Well, what do you think? I think I'm gonna sit right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Sparky. Um, Sparky is going to target. Let's see, this one here with a guiding bolt until he gets advantage on that attack since they're fairy fired, right? Uh, correct. Yeah, because it's a spell attack. So, all right, let me do that then. And do I want to upcast it? Yeah, why not? 18. 18 hits. 15 total. Radiant. Uh, yes, 15 total. It was a terrible damage roll, but yeah, 15 total, I think. He takes it. Anything else, Sparky? Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I should have said that he used some movement to stand before he did that. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Yep. Um, but is it half movement to stand? Yeah, half, how half movement to stand, correct. Yep. Uh, let me see if he has a bonus action that's useful here. Probably not, because I just cast a spell, didn't I? Okay, yeah, so I will use the other half of my movement to go prone again. <laughs> okay. I'm jacking the, the box. Dropping prone doesn't take your uh, any of your movement. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, sorry. No. Then I'll just drop prone. Okay. All right. Arnold. Yeah, give me one second to adjust my mana. Hold on. Okay. Arnold. He's not going to use Spirit Guardian since everybody seems to be going down. Um, he's going to move, though. Uh, let me see what his movement can, how far he can get. Yeah, he's going to move uh, up near Simon and take a whack at that guy that's with Simon. And if I try to get advantage, he might fall through, right? Because I have to be over here. I mean, if you move right here, you'll be flanked. Oh, with I, yeah, I didn't see Miragold. I'll do that then. She's small. It's hard to see her. Yeah, I, get it. I forgot that she had moved up. And so Arnold will do a mace attack, I think. Uh, with advantage. So let me go to advantage and mace. Boom. Damn. And for his, yeah, and for his bonus action, he's going to use his divine eminence, which gives me another 3d6 radiant damage. Holy it? shit. So let me roll that. Another 11 on top of that, which is radiant. He drops. Nice. Arnold said, I told you I'd be back. Okay. And that's it for Arnold. Okay. Uh, one second, Enix. 
because I'm on a different layer. Oh, sorry. I got to figure out how to track Arnold's mana. Oh, wait, it's on his little pop up, isn't it? Never mind. I got it. Yeah, I usually do it in the character sheet, too. Yeah, but he's an NPC character sheet, so it's right. a little trickier. So the yeah. blue circle is the mana, correct? Or is it the red? It's the blue, right? For me, it's the blue. Yeah, yeah blue should be the mana. Yeah. All right. So for some reason, it was lower than it should have been, but it should be 15, 16. Now it's 15. Okay. So some of you may see this person stepping out on the lower deck. It was 14. There we go. And then he is going to point at A, B, C, D, E. So five of you. It be six of you. Where's the sixth person? No, it's only five of you. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. At poor old Arnold. Everyone keeps picking on Arnold today. You're within 60 feet, right? Give me a deck save, Arnold. Alrighty. There's a magical flame comes raining down upon oh. Arnold's head. Arnold is not dexterous. Okay, here we go. You are not dexterous. Uh, I'll just put it out there since you got hit. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> Poor Arnold. <laughs> uh, uh, Arnold's down again. That's Am I right? That's 30, no, 41. Is that what that, is that right? 20, 41? Oh, 25. Oh, 25 just 25. Oh, I, I was adding the deck save. Never mind. So 25. Yeah. He's he's but he's still down. <laughs> Poor okay. Arnold. Okay, and Arnold goes Arg falls down. All right. Enix is gonna uh see if he can't take the one out in front of him. So oh wow, nice. That should be <laughs> well that should be fourteen plus that's right, fourteen plus twelve, twenty six. Oh, and he falls. Okay. Um, can I make it over to this one? Does your great sword have something you get when you kill oh, or crit? That's right. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's Acreus. Shit. I I gotta find out. Hold on. That's what you're using, isn't it? Acreus is for Gralnar. Oh, that's right. Sorry, I get my character confused. Never this mind. Is, uh, still killed him. Yeah, but there it is a sword of something. But um, I'll find that out here. Uh, but um, can I get up to this one through difficult, all those? Difficult terrain to move through all those. You can take a chance by stepping on this, but you may fall through. Or I could just jump over it. I mean, it's not that far. You tell me. What do you want to do? Oh, I was. God dang it. What are you doing, Enix? Yep, I'm moving up. I'm going to jump. Uh, jump over this. And. Where are you landing? Over here. Okay. So you're going to give me some kind of athletics or acrobatics check. To see if you can land on your feet since you're jumping on top of a dead body. <laughs> you step on his face and his face caves in. That's your that's your uh, ally. <laughs> Just caved in his face. My ally with the X? Yeah, that's one of those vampires. One of oh. the odds uh, crew members. Yeah. I know. Earlier. Anyways. <laughs> they didn't like so, you either. Um uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a swipe at this guy now. Yes, yeah, so you're staying on top of the other body. Okay, that's as far as you can move right there, but go ahead. Let's see your attack. And that misses. Okay, uh, that's all I got. Okay. All right, ship casualties. Got to read this again. What does that mean? You should count zero. At least one ship from each side is destroyed. So have each... Oh, yeah, D20 again. Dueling D20s. You guys have lost one ship. They have lost three. Uh, who wants to roll a d20? I rolled it last time. Oh, look at me rolling awesome again. Roll it, Don. Okay. Whoop. 
Okay. So you guys still lost one ship, but the bad guys lost two ships. Okay. I'm not going to tell you numbers because it's a den of war. You guys can't really tell who all is still in or out. Uh, okay. One minute strategize. Go. Um, we need to concentrate on that. That, uh, I don't know. Yeah, he's going to get his ass lightning bolted. Probably, I believe. Uh, yeah, he's going to get he's going to get lightning bolted with one of the shots that I've got. He looks like my favored foe for this round as well. So but he I probably can take more damage than just that shot. So, yeah, I will try to do some planar warrior on his ass when I get my turn if he's still up. Okay, you guys good? Yeah. Okay. Denivore. Denivore is another D20. Okay, another D20, guys. I guess we're back to uh, Don, right? No, Don just rolled. Yeah. I'll do it. I'm sorry. My turn turn and and then your turn. Roger. Nice. Okay, pick someone other than Crux or Grimzod to roll damage for. Who's still up, I guess, too. Right? You got Flinch. You got the uh, more veteran Hadizy. Um, The other Hadizys don't do much damage, so I'd say one of those two. We don't know who... We don't know what, we don't know what they do, though, right, Brian? Correct. Now, I told you that these two are the most powerful. I'm just telling you right now, these two are the next two more powerful. I don't know. NX is gonna NX is gonna take some damage there if uh, if it's not a ranged thing. So you guys should choose. You want Flinch or the veteran Hadizy to roll for damage? Oh, I don't know. Do the Hadizy. Let's do the. Oh, let's do it, the Hadizy. Uh, <laughs> we both pick the opposite one. Okay, yeah, exactly. Hadizy's good. Hadizy's good. Okay, the Hadizy. Pull this character sheet. The thing that does the most damage is his crossbow. So that's what I will roll. Okay, eight damage for all the bad guys, and you guys take four. NPCs. Yeah, NPCs, right. All right so do, we, do we lose any NPCs this round? Of I'm ours? Doing, I'm doing the bad guys first, which I'm pretty sure eight won't drop anybody, but got to update all their... Every little bit helps. Quick. Okay, minus eight. Boss guy. Minus eight. Uh, okay, and then minus four for all you guys. He drops. Uh, Flinch drops. The first mate. Uh, the, the, ha- not. The, ha- the hat is he dropped? Correct. He only had two hit points left. He took damage from his own crossbow bolts? Well, yeah, the, this, I mean... This yeah. is a den of war thing. So whoever rolls okay. highest, they take full damage of somebody on your team, and the other team takes half. It's a way to handle mobs, basically, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and the three head is he up here, which I don't think I gave them damage last time. So kudos to you. They're still alive. All right, that's the den of war. Okay, my warriors are up next. Oh, no, I got this guy. I forgot about him because he's on the GM layer. Comes up aboard. Do this guy. I thought he had some kind of special thing. I guess he doesn't. So he's just going to longbow somebody. As I throw my dice on the floor. Okay, one, two. Simon, longbow attack from that guy. Shit, do I do this character sheet? And I cast shield and that misses. Alrighty. 
And I'm pretty sure he has two attacks. Let me double check. Yeah, he does. So he doesn't know any better. Second one's at you. So unless he gets a crit, it's probably not going to hit, I'm assuming. There we go. Okay. Triant is up next. Going to throw a rock at somebody again. And nope. With advantage. We want to throw, we want, I want him to throw a barrel of, uh, barrel of alchemist fire at that. Uh, I want him to yeah. land it right about there. On throwing at this guy? No. Nope. He's below deck. Nope. He's upper deck. Nope. I want him to land it on upper deck. I want all these assholes up here to take some splash damage. All right. I'm going to do the rock for the throw. Then I got to find the alchemist fire handout to see what it does. Okay, one second while I look up Alchemist. Uh, where did I put it? Those would do some good damage if we went after the... God, that you're rolling terrible for that guy. A two? He has plus ten to hit and you rolled a two. And he missed on the last one, too. Yeah, I thought right. I made a handout for this. I don't guess I did, did I? All right, I got to look at the compendium. Alchemist fire. Okay, he's still in a barrel, so I'm going to bump this up because it only says 1d4. Uh, I'm going to say 4d6 for a barrel. You guys feel that's fair? Sure. Yeah. yeah. On a hit, the target takes 1d4 fire damage at the start of each turn. A creature can just damage, blah, blah, blah. It extinguish the flames. I'm going to go ahead and say it erupts in like a 10-foot radius. It doesn't say that, but that's what I'm going to do. So let me find it makes, a token. It makes sense fire. that we do that, yeah. I'm pretty sure the alchemist fire that was in this module says that. But for some reason, I never made a uh, handout or anything for it. So I can't remember. So... That's bigger than 10 foot. Shrink it down, Brian. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to do the, the attack thing. That's going to be a deck save. I'll say DC. I'll make it DC 12 since that's what he wrote for his attack. I'm making up shit as we go. Hopefully you guys don't hate it. Deck saves for the big guy. DC 12. He takes half damage, and I'll say this one. We'll take half damage of 46. So a keg of alchemist fire, Brian, just so that you know, according to standard rules, I don't know what it says in here, is uh, 66, target a set of blaze. Um, but yeah, it could be different for this module. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I'll take that. 66, I'll roll two more uh, D6s in. Don't they also have to like use an action to put the fire out or something in the future? Yeah. It yeah. takes the damage every round in the case of a creature at the start of its turn until the fire is put out. That's if they failed, right? They rolled a 19 and a 15. I said the DC was 12 on that one. Further target is set ablaze. Yeah, this doesn't talk about the save for it. So, yeah. That make, it makes that sense sounds, that, that yeah, they make the save. Yeah. If they, if they deked it out, they wouldn't be on fire, so they wouldn't take it next round. Right. Yeah, so they're taking half damage. I got to move the fire for a second so I can get to the guy. They got singed. As people that can't okay. pronounce the G properly would say. All right. Uh, that guy is right here. Oh, I got to roll. Damn it. He can't recharge, so he's just going to try to kill somebody. Uh, Mr. Your good buddy, Crux. Honor Guard. Longsword. Blah, blah. And a second <laughs> one. Blah, blah. Wow. Nice. I'm, rolling, I'm rolling good now. Them crits are out of the way. <laughs> Simon. That guy does damage. Holy crap. Oh, all right. Damage. Wow. Uh, I am going to Wand of Lightning Bolts, uh, Mr. Uh, crazy Crown. I can't really tell. It's pretty small, but he looks like he's got a crazy crown. Or a bad haircut. Pew. Pew. 
27 damage, DC 15, Dex. Dex save. That is my priest guy. So he's probably Dex pretty dexterous. Save. Ooh, you got to meet it to beat it. Okay, so he takes oh. half damage. 13. I think technically Rand's character, the only one who got a good look at one of these before. I don't think anyone else was below deck when you guys fought the first star moth. Okay. Anything else, Simon? Um, Arnold, you're down, right? Yes, Arnold is down. Okay, so I'm going to use another sorcery point to uh, speed up uh, my Cure Wounds spell. Let me just take the sorcery point off first before I cast the spell. Um, there it is. And I'm going to upcast it one cast. And you now have 11. Sweet. Okay, is that it for Simon? Yep. Marigold. Marigold is going to come up and assist as well. Oh, oh be careful of the lattice. No, it, I tried to get on the edge and it just jumped over. Um, <laughs> Snapping to so, grid. Yeah, she's going to give you some uh, cure wounds as well. Oh, I thought you were going to say some sexual healing, but that I'll take the cure wounds. <laughs> Mm. Little half in okay. love in. I gotta right, come up seven. with a Barry White or Eddie Murphy uh, NPC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was Barry White, wasn't it? No, it wasn't Barry White. No, sexual healing was Marvin Gaye, I think. Yeah, yeah I believe you're, it. you're correct. Okay. Is that it for Marigold? That's that's it. Okay. It's your stand put, right? Yeah. Okay. Sparky. He's going to stand up. Because of the range, I think he's going to have to Radiant Bolt the Priest rather than Crossbow him. So maybe next time he can do the Crossbow. Uh, so, oh wait, no, I already used that, didn't I? Sorry, Guiding Bolt is what I meant. All right, never mind, I can't use that because it's... All right, so I'll move then. Uh, I'm going to move down the stairs. See how far I can move. I only have half my movement left though, right? Correct. So I can probably get to, oops, I can probably get down to the base of the stairs, which would be here. Ten feet to right there, yep. Yep. Um, and I'm having a little trouble measuring distance between where I am and where the priest is. Can I can I target the priest from where I am? Or is that Yeah, they're on the different? same level. So it'd be kind of like this. You know what I'm saying? Or is it No, I'm I guess okay it would that. be I guess it would be over here this way. I guess it would be this way. Because they're next to us, right? Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah, 55. Okay, so I'm not really in, in good range then. I might as well give it a try, though. What the hell? Right. Worst case scenario, I miss. All right, so I think I roll with disadvantage since it's a crossbow. So I'm going to... Hold on. Don't yeah. roll it yet. Okay. Um, It's a hand crossbow, so it's outside of its normal range. Um, No, I'm not going to. Disregard. Okay. You can't, I can't uh, do it. Let me yeah, no problem. Um, let me just check one spell real fast. Make sure I can't do that. All right, never mind. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to attack twice with the hand crossbow at disadvantage. Oh, 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 oh that's good stuff. <laughs> wow. Probably my four best rolls I've ever had playing on roll 20. Um, wow. So 23 and 24 were the two. And I think I can do, since I haven't used a bonus action. Yes. I will use my bonus action to do Planar Warrior. And that means that um, the first hit, I guess, is uh, all force damage. And I do another 1d8. So let me roll that. Oh, awesome. That's okay. So 12 plus 6, 18, I think, total. Okay. 12, 12 force and 6 piercing, I think, if, you need, if it matters. Yep, I got it. He's okay. still standing. Okay. And I think that's it. That's bonus action, action, and movement. Yep, so that's all for me. Okay. And now you're up again with Arnold. Okay. Arnold will take 
his half movement stand. He looks real groggy. This is like the second time he's been knocked down. He's not sure what the hell's going on. <laughs> um, he's going to... Um, what's the range on Sacred Flame? It's not in his spell description, so I know it has a range, right? I think it's 60 feet. One second, I'll check real quick. If you click on it, if you click on the little um little gear icon in your attacks, it'll list it. 60 feet. Oh, in my attacks. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong place. All right, so he'll do Sacred Flame on the priest. So it's a DC... His DC is, let me find it real fast. Where is his DC? DC is 15. And that's radiant damage. Yeah, 12 radiant. You hear him scream a little bit. A little bit of hair is on fire, but uh, he is still alive. Okay. Um, I think I don't think Arnold has much else he can do. That was his action. Any bonus actions? No. Yep, I think that's it for Arnold then for this round. Hey. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. He will cast a healing word on himself. Bonus action. Seven more healings. So that's two mana I have to take off as well. Okay. Oh no, wait. Cantrips don't count mana, right? Correct. Nope. Okay, and he gets seven more hit points. And that's it for Arnold. Okay. He's up next. You see him retreat into the ship and disappear. And then I got to read something. Mm. All righty then. Hey, Enix. Okay. Enix is going to uh, take a little uh, dab at this guy here. Where is Enix? I'm losing him on the map. Um, Enix is right. Oh, you got to read that guy. That's why I couldn't yeah. see you. Okay, 23. Uh... Uh, let's see if this is going to work. I haven't used it yet. <clears throat> so, <laughs> ah, it's still not enough. You still hit him for 15, and he drops. Okay. Uh... And this is an astral elf, correct? Uh, yeah, you would recognize all these as these are part of the Xerxian Empire. Okay. Um, so Annex is going to drop his sword. It's going to go poof. It's going to draw out his wand. And he's going to hit that guy with. It. A whole person. All right, so hold on a minute. Use an object and attack are two different things. So when you attack, you get your extra attack with a weapon because you use the attack action. Okay, so I can't make another attack with a wand? Correct, because technically a wand is like using a, a, an object, not really attacking like with a weapon. That makes sense? Yeah. Using the one takes your whole action. You can't right. break your and your and your two attacks take your whole action. Right. Okay. I thought I could I thought it was an attack with a one, but okay. Uh boy, there's no more bad guys over here. You're something that means you're not gonna drop your sword then? Um yeah, if I can't 
Yeah, I won't drop my sword because I I have um I can drop my sword because I have uh a bonded weapon. Okay, but your call. So, but no, if I don't have to drop it, I won't because I can't do anything else except run over there. But um yeah, I I'll wait. Okay, so that's your turn then. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay, ship casualties. Uh, I'll read this again. I'll get more D20s again. Yep, D20 from each team. So one of you guys roll me a D20. God, look how horrible I'm rolling. Holy crap. It, I think it's back to Don, right? No, it's yours. Oh, is yep. it mine? I thought I went yep. last. Oh, no, no, I didn't. You're right. Okay, sorry. So D20. Whew, just barely. Good and thing I got Brian a rolled well for Yeah, you. he rolled a three, so I got lucky. All right, so... You guys lose one ship. Enemy loses two ships. Okay. One minute strategize. Go. We need to get on the other ship, I think, now, right? Well, yeah. Is there any is there any bad guys left on our ship? I don't believe so. Yeah, so we need to board the other ship and kill. Yeah, because we don't have much range. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, my hand crossbow is not awesome for range. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's go over there and take the fight to them. Whatever that thing is, and then that other the what was that a priest or something? He was a priest that was out. He ran away. I guess we heard him pretty bad. So we, but he'll he'll be trouble if we don't finish him off. You guys good? Yep. Attack. A kill. Okay, Den of War, another D20. Can I roll anything good? Oh, that time you did. Is it me again? Am I still, is nope. one person does Don, Don's up. Don's All up. All right. Oh, hey. Good roll. good roll, but Brian rolled better that time. Okay, yeah. so. Brian rolled um, one one. Okay, so this guy hasn't rolled yet, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use his attack. Hopefully, I don't kill my own guys. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. You're allowed to choose based on the awesome attacks, but we just have to choose a guy. And you, guys, <laughs> you guys got 70 <laughs> freaking points out of Grimzod. So, yeah, yeah, you have to choose that. True. Yeah, but we didn't get to, we didn't know that Grimzod potentially could do that. That was your crappy roll. Don't blame us for that. You, you rolled that. <laughs> All right, so all the NPCs take 18 points, and I'll say half of my guys take that as well, since half of them are probably going to be engaged with you guys. So nine on mine. Oh, this is all me. So hold on, guys, while I go through and update everybody's hit points again. 18 for the bad guys. Grim's odd drops. Oh, poor Grim. Uh, not Grim's odd. Correct is what I meant to say. Grimzod is still alive. He's technically like undead alive. Uh, who are the other NPCs? Oh, up here. Oh, yeah, my Trent. Uh, all the head of these drop. How all the ones on the, on the on the yeah upper deck yeah. by the Triant Triant by your aunt, and the Triant takes some damage. I think that's all the NPCs on your side. Okay. Commander dude is going to step. Uh, I got to move the freaking flame. I'm going to put it on the map layer, so I quit clicking on it. He's going to step out of the flames. And Did he take flame damage before? Is it deck save when you start or end your turn there? I'll say that. I'm cool with that. Deck save for him. Uh, DC 12 is what I said before. No, right? I, I think the I think the thing with um, Alchemist Fire is that he did the deck save to see if it landed on him, and if it didn't, and if it landed on him, then he has to either put it out or he burns. He doesn't that's, get to deck save it off himself again. But that's if he fails, though, right? Oh, if he, he failed, the, if he failed the first one, yeah, he didn't fail. They both succeeded. Okay. Okay. All right. So you can only do this once.
Well, the two allies within 15 feet of the commander can disengage or attack. Both centers allow the target to move to 15 feet before or after. Well, they don't need to move. They just need to attack. So they're going to shoot somebody. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, going to be the Enix. That's the Warriors. Longbow attack. And then the other attack is going to... Ooh, both of them are at Enix. So 20 and a 14 to Enix. That first one would hit if I didn't have shield. You casting it again? You're dang right. <laughs> Keeping track of your mana, right? I, yeah, that's only two. <laughs> okay. All right, so what else is the commander going to do? He's going to join everybody else and do a longbow attack at the whoever's behind Enix. Who's the next one? Uh, Arnold. Yeah, oh, let's just, I'll, Arnold. Just keep, I'll just keep trying to kill Arnold. Oh, really? How many times are you going to knock him down? He keeps getting back up. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? I think I've critted Arnold like three or four times. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Poor Arnold. Arnold's so, like, I forsake you, my God. 14. Why are you doing this to me? 14 plus 13. So 27 points. Oh, he's down again. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, uh, where did my paper tigers? Okay, that's him. Warriors. Oh, they get to shoot again. Uh, Marigold. Which, which of them are currently taking fire damage? Uh, none of them are taking fire damage because they this one and this one made their saves. Yeah, but which ones didn't? They were the only two that were in the flame. It was ten yeah. foot radius. Oh, okay. You said you're aiming mainly for that guy, right? That's why I dropped okay. this here ten foot radius. Okay. Okay. All right. So first things first. This one is going to shoot at Marigold. Longbow. Longbow. Owie. I'm second sure one. Twenty-one with it. So on that on that second hit, I'm going to use silvery barbs. Oh. Ooh. What's Marigold's AC, Don? Fourteen. So I met oh, it. Both hit. It. Both hit. That's a lot. No, I met it to beat it. No, they have to meet it to beat it, Don. Correct. <laughs> there, there, you keep there, trying at it. it. It hasn't worked yet, Don. <laughs> oh, man. That's good, though, Don. I got to remember that. For the next so time was Simon doing something there? No, I'm not going to do anything. All right. Oh, shit. And, all right. So she took both those hits then, right? So 22 and 15. That's 37. Oh, Marigold is down. Oh, She's down? Really? Oh, no. She's not? My apologies. She has 38 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> She's got one okay. hit. Because I just rolled a four again, so the next one's going to be shooting at her. Oh, she's going to go down. Warrior. Hopefully Longbow. he won't do more than 38 points of damage. Oh, oh he hits his friend. Oh, they both <laughs> miss. All right. All right, third one. Uh, I'm not going to do it again. That was three fours in a row. Come Sparky, on. Sparky. Okay. I'm, yep. gonna, I'm gonna hit you with a, with a crit instead. <laughs> Are you now? Okay. Ah, uh, no. Not even that, close. That misses. Twenty and a fourteen miss. Oh, sorry. Twenty hits. Uh, fourteen misses. Okay, so twenty hits for nineteen damage total. Damn. Let me see. I don't have any resistances, do I? I don't think I do. Okay. Nineteen. Yep. Um, um, Hold, uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, that's fine. Do it, Simon. Wow. And then the last one is going to be one, two, three, four, five. Oh, Arnold's down, isn't he? <laughs> he is. <laughs> uh, you know what? Fuck it. They're going to shoot at him. Oh, boy. Disadvantage. That's it. If they hit, it's automatic death fail save. Is that? Yeah, it's automatic crit. Or sorry, death fail. 12 and a 14. 
Uh, that they both miss based on his okay. AC. All right, then. Uh, that is all of them. You want the Treant to throw another keg of Alchemist Fire? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Ping where you want it to land. How about right here? How about right in the middle of those How about it, something at advantage? How are they going to oh. get advantage? Oh, fairy fire. He's right. Fairy fire. It's going to be deck saves for these guys. That's what we said last time, remember? Yeah, it's a deck save anyway. Right. Oh, but well, they get an advantage? hit, though. I mean, he hasn't been able to hit anything yet. Yeah, yeah and he shot right he threw the is... rock the first time, which was a which was a, a, a ranged attack. But Brian's playing the Alchemist Fire is not a ranged attack. He's landing it in the vicinity, and it uh, and we just need to tell him the vicinity, and then it's a dex save. He's not making us uh, do so a, you don't get a, a, yeah, a ranged don't, attack. Roll. There's no advantage for that. Right. So where do you okay. want to drop, guys? How about right in the middle one then? Get the two on the outside. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Plus this guy here, right? Who's this guy? Right, it would get this guy. So you want right in the middle of these two. Yeah, it's ten foot, right there. Perfect. Okay, so deck saves for those guys. Uh what? I, what? I, I said twelve last. Oh, it's because I rolled for the attack. Yeah, you guys, you yeah. guys gonna make it twelve again, or you mean roll for the attack and make that the DC? I'm good either way. You guys roll tell me. It. Sure, roll that's for it. You want to do it? Okay, I'll roll for it. Whatever his attack is, that's what the DC is. Okay. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It wasn't that six, it's 66 damage we figured out, right? Now what it was, yeah. 66? Yeah. yeah, on a failed save, yeah. All right, so that a deck save of 24. That didn't, back, that didn't backfire on you at all, Brian. Yeah, really, he was hoping for a two. Okay, so the... The boss guy fails, and then the regular warrior dude. He's not going to get any even... more. <laughs> Just the uh, opposite. <laughs> that's what you were hoping for for the attack roll, right? All right, 66 is what we said, right? Yep. I can't roll six to uh, do it manually. So, uh, roll 66. Okay, 23 for both of them. Actually, wasn't that good of a row, I don't think. Uh, it was okay, not great. Okay, and then they are both on fire, is what we determined, right? Unless they take an action to put it out, yeah. All right, so let me give them another little red dot. And there should have been a guy on fire from last time, but did he get killed? No, no they, both made, the, they both made their saves. saves. Oh, right, right, so they didn't catch on fire, right, okay. Right, yeah, because I didn't roll a 24 to hit for the DC. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, Treant. Uh, honor Guard. Uh, oh, yeah, he died last time. Yep. He's dead. Simon. Um, is this, the, this is the position that the ships are in relation to each other. Is that right, Brian? Correct. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Uh, so I, I don't really... I can just step across from... Uh, from here to here, from here to here. I don't see where you're. I see Sparky making a line. I'm if you, line. you, if you step on this, there's a chance you may fall. No, he's I'm not going to step on that. I can go around and not step on that. I want to know okay. if I can step from here over to the here. Yeah. Or if I have to jump, uh, or if I'll I'm say it's close enough. You don't need to say. Okay. So then um, 30 feet will get me to here, I think. Okay. So I got a fear of the mind this. So I'll say this is deck on the same level as you. When you get to this part of the green, that's like a, a wall and there's like a door right there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to move to here and I'm going to wand of lightning bolts these two guys. Okay. And technically, these two these are a little bit higher than you, but you still have, you can still see them. They're elevated from this deck. So twenty six damage, DC fifteen on this one and this one, yeah. right? Okay, DC fifteen, deck save. Come on, boys, what can, show them what you can do. Should not have been a disadvantage. So sixteen and a twenty one, so half damage, thirteen. Yep. 
He is very, 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 very crispy, but alive and crispy. The other one's looking better than him. Um, all right. And then I'm going to do... Uh, I'm going to do the... Um, Firebolt with my bonus action uh, by um, speeding up that spell at the one that's closest to me. That one is... Oh, that one's not burning. Uh, and so... No, I'm going to do Firebolt at the one that's over here with my bonus action. And that is going to be an advent at advantage because he is currently... Fair, well, which ones are... Well, no, they're fairy fired. Yeah, that's advantage. So I'm going to hit the same one that I just hit with advantage because he's fairy fired. Okay. And I got to find the stupid Firebolt because I've laid this out in such a way that I can't find my... There it is. That's at the very bottom. Interesting. Okay. And there it is. 15. 15 does not hit. Man, that was terrible damage anyway. 2d10 and I get 4. All right. That's all I got. Okay. Marigold. Uh, Marigold is going to do yeah she's going to move up um over here and get centrally located um and then she's going to do that a prayer of healing for 13 who gets that? Should be all of us. It's 30, 30 feet radius, radius 30, 30 feet diameter. 30. It's, uh, range is 30 foot. It says up to six creatures of your choice that you can see. So you have to yeah. pick six of us. So it would be all of, all of us that... Uh, you should heal some NPCs too then, right? Yep. Yep, because uh, Annex doesn't need it. Arnold needs it. Marigold definitely needs it. Um, yeah, Sparky I, doesn't desperately Sparky need does. it. But. Um, Just make a decision. Who all do you want it to include in that? Yeah. Uh, so Marigold, Arnold, Simon, and then the other three would be... Oh, um, is he dead? Crux. Yeah, Crux. Crux is down, so he needs to be healed. You're is standing he on top of him. Dead? He is down. I've been doing death saves behind the scenes, so... Okay, yeah, we need to save our now captain. Back up. Okay, and you're standing on top of the dead body of the first mate. <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so all, all the party plus Crux is what I heard. Yep. Correct? Okay. Yep. That, that still leaves you... One more. One more, right? Well, no, because there's five of you. There's six Four. total. So the right. He's not healing himself, healing. is he? Oh, yeah, there's five of us. Oh, is uh, Marigold, are you healing yourself, too? Yeah, because she's oh, yeah. down. We can't okay. see her health bar, but she's not doing well. Okay, she's got one. Fine. She had one, remember? Okay. Okay, so roll the uh, 2d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier there, Don. For he already, I thought he already rolled it. It was 13 up above. It was 13, yeah. yeah. Oh, he did. Okay, is that right? Yeah. Two D8 Looks like it. Plus four, yep. It's so 13 plus four. everybody. Okay, I'll do cruxes. And I already got Arnold and Sparky. Okay, the crux is prone. Crux coughs off some blood. His big old fat head. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Marigold? Uh, no, that's going to be it for her. Okay. Everybody got healing? I'm supposed to get healing. Yep, Sparky. Okay. I think Sparky is going to... Can he get all the way to... Let's see. Wait, I have extra movement, don't I? Sorry, let me check. double-check my movement. 
I do have a little extra. I forgot that. Okay. Can he get all the way to there with 35 feet? A difficult have... terrain to move through any of those other people's faces. Okay, so gotcha. So that, math. That's not going to work then. Okay. So he'll, um, but he can go up here 35 feet, but that's also difficult terrain. Those two guys are on, that are dead. Correct. Correct. Jump across. But I could move to here and jump over. Now, what's your strength modifier? Strength or dex? Strength modifier is zero. Okay. Uh, you just need to make me a athletics or acrobatics check to see if you land on your feet. All right. I can do acrobatics. Unless you can burn whatever 10 feet here to step on over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'd, you rather jump from I'd rather here. have my movement. So it's 25. Okay. That should right, yeah. do it. I you can land on your feet. Right here. Okay. All right. So let me sorry, let me get back to my movement. So that was fifteen and then another five is twenty. And then I should be able to go fifteen more than did that count as an action to make that save or the acrobatics? No. No, it was just to do to move. Okay. So yeah, I think I can move on your feet. I think I can oh what the hell? Sorry. My uh map is being weird all of a sudden. The whole map is moving when I try to move Sparky. That is bizarre. All I see is Sparky moving. Yeah, yeah. I know, but it's yeah. like my map is shifting around. Very strange. That's weird. Can you Go move Sparky to, to here? Can you move Sparky to here? Mm -hmm. I think it was here. And I'll maybe I'll reload after I this attack. Oh, 20 to Did there. You, 25. 30? 35 is my total movement because I'm oh. a ranger. Okay. Yeah, it's being it's being just kind of weird for some reason. I might have to reload. But I'm going to attack um, one of the guys with fairy fire who's closest to me, I guess. Uh, this guy? Does he have fairy fire? No, he's no, just he's, on he's fire. He's on fire. Yeah. Yeah, no, I want the advantage. So <laughs> he's the, got the real the guy fire. To the, the guy to the south, I guess, that has fairy fire on him, right? All right. So you want to attack this one? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so hand crossbow. Oh, that should have been an advantage. Yeah, I'll roll it twice. So 22. For 10 damage. Switch. Yeah. He Try to keep the damage the same. Yeah. And can I do Planar Warrior again? Let's see. I can. I'll do the Planar Warrior damage as well. So that is another D8. And it turns the 10 piercing into force damage. Your second attack was on this guy, right? No, that no, it was, that was all one attack because I had advantage, right? Because he oh. has fairy fire on him. The gin damage dropped him. Oh, so I don't need to worry about planar warrior. Okay, no. then I'll do the second attack on the guy behind him because I do have multi attack. So, son of a bitch. And that, Dangerous. yeah, is he still up? He's still up. All right, I'm going to do the planar warrior on him then. Okay. So that's another D8, and everything is force damage. Let me roll the D8, the other D8. So that would be 13 total force damage on the second guy. He is still standing. All right. And that's it. And I'm going to reload because my map is being kind of weird. So yeah. I'll be back in a sec. Ironically, Arnold's up next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, all right. Just give me one second to refresh it and see if it fixes it. Hold on. Yeah, it was really weird. Like cool. when I would click and try to drag my token, he would, he would the whole map would shift around instead of the token. It's very strange. Okay, Arnold. So Arnold will stand up, and um, I suppose move. How is Mary Gold? Does she need more healing? Because Arnold could try to heal her. I'd say Arnold and Mary Gold are about the same boat right now. Okay. As as health. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So he's going to, um, sorry, let me get back on my, there we go. To open the other character sheet. He's going to do some, he'll do a cure wounds on her because she's right next to him. So 10 healing on Mary Gold. Nice. And then he's going to move up to, I think, here, 
Uh, he's behind that guy. Is that a problem? Should be all right, right? There you go. Okay, thanks. The way. Yeah. Um, and I think that might be all his movement since that was 10 feet to get into that square. I don't think he has a ton of movement. Let's see. What is he? 30. Yeah. Let me measure one more time. Yeah, 5, 10, 15, 20, yeah, 25, 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he'll just stay right there. Okay. That's it for Arnold? I think that's it because that was an action to do cure wounds, right? Yep. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. So. You guys feel the shift of the boat. This is the of the mine. Uh, but the star moth is starting to pull away from the ship. So there's now a 20 foot gap between the ships. Oh, Simon, we're trapped. Oh, she. Okay. So w when they boarded, did they throw grappling lines or something across to hold the ships together? Or what, what did they do? There was nothing holding the ship together. They just kind of ran it next to it and held the ship next to it as they all boarded. That's what I'm letting you guys do. That's what they did as well. Okay. There could have been like a plank or something thrown across to let them go across. I didn't even think about that far, but yeah, no, there's no grappling hooks or anything like that. Who controls our ship direction wise? Is it Phil Ardra or is it Crux? Okay. Yeah, the spell jammer. So in theory, she could move our ship to stay next to the other ship, right? Yep, she could. How does she see to know how to know know where to navigate? Um, spill jammers have like this sixth sense of okay. I think I forget what the radius is all around the ship. I think they gotcha. can talk to anybody on the ship too, can't they? Uh, they have message. I think message is either line of sight or a certain range, but they also have sending they use to talk to the other ships. Let me check message real quick, see if it requires line of sight. Point a finger toward a creature within range and whisper a message to target. Here's a message, blah, blah, blah. You can cast a spell through solid objects if you're familiar with the target and know it's... Uh, yep. Yeah, so she can message anybody within 120 feet. Doesn't have to see them. All right. So, Enix, are you going to come join us or what are you going to do, bud? You'd have to okay. make... He'd have to make some running long jump or something to get over to us now since we're pulling apart or what? Correct. Aaron, I'll do this. I'll put uh, Phil Ardra in the terminal so you know when their ship can move. Okay. She rolled a 15. Much better than us. All right, Enix. So what are you doing? There's 20 feet between the ships. Okay. So can you see my line? I can. Okay. But add so, 20 to that because the ship's further away. Right. So um, I've got 30 feet of movement. You're going to try to Plus jump got, 20 feet? Let's, let, okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> let's yeah. make sure you know that. <laughs> um, so we're going to do... Starlight step for 30. Ah, okay. And then we're going to move for our own 30. And then, then we're going to cut people in half. Are you going up top or are you going inside this little building here? The oh, guys by the, take this guy out. The guys by the ballista are raised or high, are higher above us, though, I think. All right. So this is, this is like a ramped, uh, I guess, front like yep. window or whatever. So you can run up it. That's fine. Okay. Just, I was make sure you're going up and not in the ship. Yeah. No, I was, I was wanting to take this guy out. That's on fire. Okay. I'll say it's an extra five feet to climb up this. So it's like 10 feet to go up this square. So long as you got that enough room, yeah, you can get up. And yep. Next to him. Okay. Are you attacking him? The action? Of course you are. 27 definitely hits. For eight points. He's on fire. Should I have that at advantage? <laughs> fire doesn't give you advantage. It just sucks for him. Lit up. <laughs> <laughs> Second attack does not hit. Um, yeah, let's do... Uh, oh, what is it? Second... Is it second wind? 
Oh no, well, that's it's the other one. It's uh, action surge. Is that you're thinking of? Action surge. Yes, thank you. Okay, gonna use that here. Go ahead if you want. Okay. Twenty six hits seventeen. First, let's resolve that twenty six. So he takes that fifteen. And let me see if he has something as a reaction. Nope. And the second one hits as well. So now you guys know his AC. Or approximate AC. Anything else next? Nope. Uh, I guess that's it. Hey, someone roll me a d20. I think I... I think okay. it's uh, Rob now, right? Rob's, if, yeah. If he's still listening. Nice. Okay. okay. Uh, one minute strategize. Go. John, I would like you to have taken one step south so that I could get in the line of those three and lightning bolt them, but I guess that's not going to happen now. Yeah, sorry. Should should one or more of us go inside to try to kill the priest? He must be the one piloting the ship now, probably, right? I'll go inside. I mean, yeah, I guess you're the better melee fighter, so it probably makes sense. Well, melee is all I can do, and I can't do lightning bolt this turn because I can't hit more than one guy anyway, so. Okay, I can get up there and help out Enix. Yeah, hopefully right. he's uh, about I'll split, done. I'll split, I'll split the party and go in. It's up to you, or you can help us finish those guys off, and then we can kill them. No, they're they're pilot. not they're not they're not big guys, and they're already Hold they've on. already been taking damage. So yeah, let's get Bill as you bub his uh, his new ship. So Arnold and Marigold are probably gonna have to stay behind though, right? I don't see how they're gonna get over twenty feet into the enemy ship. Yeah, Marigold doesn't want anything to do with them. She's, yeah, Arnold has only tragic. got 13 hit points, so one hit and he would be down again. Yeah. Well, do your best support from a distance, I guess. Right. Okay. Get on the ballista. Hmm. Interesting idea. Oh, yeah, the tree ant can help us too, right? In theory. Yeah. Take out maybe, those should start, maybe she should start throwing rocks again. Yeah. Let's do it. Just keep in mind, we've got Den of War coming up, NPCs, the roll-off, if that changes yep. or alters your strategy planning at all. Is the tree yet been taking damage, too, for the NPC stuff? Yes, it has. He, ha he has, okay. Or it has, okay. You guys good? I think I, so. Yeah, I think so. Hey, someone roll me a d20. My turn now. Uh... Well, that's your eight. That's my nice eight. Thing. I win. Okay. Yay. He's done it. It's got to be one of my plain warriors. I'm very happy for you, Brian. That I won? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've been uh, having a rough night rolling, so, you know, I'm trying to be gracious here. Uh, 22 damage for the NPCs. So... Crux is probably down again. Crux is down again. And Gr so is Grimzod. Oh, boy. Well, who needs undead? But we might want to get Crux back up. Okay, and all my guys take 11. Except for the one that's engaged. And I hope he's already dead. This one's closer to death. But they all take damage. Okay, my commander dude. Okay, so he's on fire. So he either takes an action to try to put himself out of fire, or he takes. Does it say in there what damage is for the following rounds? You still have it open, Rob. It's the same. Damn, every, every, every round, unless, unless they put it out on their uh, unless they put it out on their own. Man, that's yeah. fierce. And it's just a t use their action to put it out. That's it. There's no. Yep, that's okay. right. All right, well, 
He does not like being on fire, so he's using his action. Oops, not he to takes, kill himself. He takes the oh, damage. I like that. He takes the damage at the beginning of his turn, though. He takes Unless the damage he uses an action take, to put it out. He takes he takes the damage at the beginning of his turn, and he uses action to try to put it out for next turn. Do I have it in here? Or did you read it? Did you find it on, on the uh I found companion? something. I don't know about it for this particular. No, I found it in D D B. I don't know about oh. it this particular. Okay. All right. So he takes his damage yeah. and then he can he can uh That's right. his action to put it out, right? At the start of so um the target is set ablaze, takes the damage again every round at the start of each of its turn until the top fire is put out. Creature within reach of the blaze can take an action to smother the flames using a blanket or a carpet. Ah, so somebody okay. else can put it out for him if they want as well. But these guys take it at the beginning of their turn. At the beginning okay. of their turn. And it was 46, 66. Six is what uh six is what this says. Son of a bitch. Okay. Uh... I thought I rolled that a while ago. There it is. All right, he takes 19. And then he's going to use his action to put it out. So let me see if he has anything of the bonus action, which I don't think he does. Come on, bonus action. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. I got to roll for it. I haven't rolled for the past two times. Nope, he doesn't have it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, he has that as a bonus action. All right, he's going to hit you, try to hit you in the face uh, with the back of his sword, Enix. With 19, is that the rule? Correct. Well, it would hit me. Except <laughs> I've got a shield. <laughs> okay. Uh, you got to be running out of mana. It's like the third I've time had, I think you've I've guessed got, that. I've got 10 mana. Okay. And all I've done is swing my sword and cast shield three times. Well, you need to stop casting shield because I need to hit you in the face a few times. <laughs> well, I'm not running out of mana is all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, my warriors are up next. Uh, so I'll do this one first. He's going to take damage and probably die. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one. Oh, no, shit. Move up here. Take two shots at uh, NX. What is your AC right now with shield? Uh, my AC right now is 22. Okay, so it's 23 hits for 12. And then this one is going to shoot at Sperky, the one that's still alive. Uh, yeah, that's one right here. Sorry. Okay. I, I may have pinged on the wrong one. It's fine. Two shots. 1823. I believe that they both hit. Uh, let me double check though. Hold on. Yeah, they both hit. Okay. And so that's how much total damage? Uh, 26 uh, and 9. 35. Oof. Okay. Okay. And this one is going to shoot at NX. Because he doesn't know any better. Because you're freaking shield. Come on. Where's, here's why I need a crit. Oh, shit. I called it. <laughs> All right. So 9 plus 8, 17 plus 7. 24 points of damage. Damn. I'm just assuming the 18 misses on the second one. Correct. Okay. That is all of them. Treant. Third verse, same as the first? Nope. He's going to throw rocks now. Yeah. He's going to throw a rock at this dude. I think that's what we talked about, right, guys? He's going to throw a rock at... Well, let's let's throw a rock at this dude here, and he's got advantage because the dude's on fairy fire. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. So, rock throw. And they do good damage. <laughs> woo how much has he got left? That oh, wasn't even that advantage. He is. Uh, oh, let me roll it again in case I get a crit, but I'll still use that that uh, that damage. Okay, so twenty five 
Uh, he is very, 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 very bloodied. But he took 25. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Fel Audra has control of the ship. She moves the ship closer. They're now back to where they're touching each other. Oh, the ship okay. they're touching. Okay. And Honor Guard is dead. You take him out. I'll leave him there for now. Simon. Uh, so Simon is going to... Simon can get to here, Brian, but he wants to go inside. How does he get inside? Uh, right there is the door. Okay. So, so he's, he's, got got five, he's got five feet of movement after this. Okay. So Theo the Mine, I got to try to describe you inside. You have a, have a hallway beyond. The hallway starts right about here. It goes further into the, uh, uh, the ship, but you don't see any... Uh, thing up here at the end of the hallway, probably about 20 feet beyond this, uh, are stairs. I don't and there's a door, don't there's a door to there. the right and the left. There's a door like right here and right here <clears throat> on each side of the hallway before you get to the stairs. Okay. And could I see anything. that? Could I see that before I went in or did I see that as a result of me going in? That's going to be once you open the door and go in. So I can, but what I'm asking is, can I open the door and look? Or am I committed to going in? No, you can crack the door open. Look, I'm fine with that. Okay, so I want to, I want to, on my way up, I want to crack the door open, and have a look. And I don't see any, I don't see any peeps right in front of me. So I'm going to carry on, and I'm going to land here. Okay. And I'm going to punch that guy with booming blade. Um, I don't remember how I. So I'm going to punch him with gaunt with thunder gauntlets, and if that hits, not an advantage. Twelve is a miss. Twenty-one um, is a hit. Yeah. No. No, I don't know how I've got this set up. I forget. It's been so long since I've been able to have anybody in fucking melee range on this guy. I can't remember how I set it up. Booming blade is only if you hit, right? Yeah, but I set it up so that I could do it as the attack. I think. Mm. Um, and the damage, but the damage isn't, but the damage isn't set up right because it doesn't have my modifier on it. So, I think your attack, attack. I'll fix it. I'll fix it in between. Um, but my attack was the twelve, Brian. It wasn't the twenty-one. My first attack. I only get one attack in a round. Oh, okay. So let me give that um, eleven points back to him. Yeah, is there anything on fire still here, or is this fire out? Uh, yeah, this fire is still here. Okay. So, and he's put this fire out. If I drag this guy one thing to the south with telekinetic push, can um, can I pull him into the fire? Uh, I'll make him do another deck save if you want to do that. I would like to do that. So, DC... DC 16 save against me being able to move him five feet. Okay, DC 16. Strength save. Yeah. Okay, so he is going one, to, one down here to the south. Yeah. Okay, so remind me on his turn. I'll, I'll have him do a deck save at the start of his turn. Let's okay. see if he's in the fire again. Damn it. <laughs> Anything else, Simon? Uh, nope. Okay. Marigold. Uh, Marigold is going to bring this guy up with a uh, which one? Crux. Uh, yeah, okay. Crux. Okay, it's five. And. Uh, Next turn, I'll get this guy, but uh, I can't use can't use my spells because he's undead. So I'll just have to stabilize him. Can't use your spells because he's dead. What do you mean by that? I'm dead. I'm dead. He's trying to heal him. He can't I was going to heal undead. him, but he's undead, and it, so it won't work. Uh, he's like an NPC. I'm going to say your heal does work on him. Oh well, it's too late. I healed this one. Okay. I could have used the my my prayer, but um, yeah, that's I what would, you did last time. I would suggest you look at the casting time of prayer of healing. 
It's a bonus action, I guess. <laughs> no, but it's not a cantrip, though, right? It's ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh yeah, that oh, you use that in between combat. Uh, yeah, that's true. Okay, you got a free one there. Yeah, I did. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, the next turn, I'll bring, I'll get this guy back up just by stabilizing him. But um, for now, that'll have to do. Okay. All right, Sparky. Um, Sparky is going to move a little closer and shoot at the guy who shot at him. I guess this guy down here. Okay. And, um, oh, sorry. That Arnold sheet or Sparky. There we go. Yes. Sorry, that shouldn't be. Oh, it is an advantage because yeah, he's, he's terrified. Fire. Okay, and I'm going to do Planar Warrior on top of that. So another 1d8, which is my bonus action. Yep. yep. And then I'll do the second attack. Oh, oh, all right. So that's 11 force damage. And then the second <laughs> attack. He's alive by his pinky toe. <laughs> does 14 hit? 14 does not hit. Okay, I could also potentially do... Hold on a sec here. Yeah, I think I'll also, on the on that first... I'll do the Favored Foe on that first attack, too. I think I can stack Planar Warrior and Favored Foe, because Favored Foe does not take a bonus action or an action. Pretty sure. Yep, I can just increase it by 1d4, the damage. Okay. Okay, so I'll unroll it. Two. <laughs> Guess how many hit points you had left? Three. Two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Sparky's like, take he that. Drops. Take that. Okay. Anything else, Sparky? Uh, I'm going to, I think I'm good where I am for right now. Okay. Arnold. Arnold's going to healing word Sparky for sure. Because Sparky. I haven't seen heard Arnold wants this tonight. Oh. Not even once. Oh, <laughs> uh, what would Arnold say? If it bleeds, I can heal it. How about that? <laughs> um, eight healing damage, or healing damage, eight healing points for Sparky. Eight for Sparky. And, and yeah. I think Arnold's going to stay where he is. He's pretty happy right there for right now. And Arnold got another inspiration card. Oh, nice. Thank you. Okay. And then Simon's practicing hitting somebody. Well, I'm just setting up these stupid... Okay. Anything else out of Arnold? Um, that's it. That's it for Arnold. Okay. The ship moves another 30 feet away. So now a 30-foot gap between the ships. Until Fel Archer's move, right? And then she Correct. can catch... Okay. Correct. Okay, Enix. All right, so we're going to go after this one here. Why? Yeah. Just seems like the fun thing to do. Son of a bitch. Yeah, that barely hits. <laughs> He's still, still standing, though. So, yeah, now that one, that's right on the edge. You got to meet it to beat it. So, yeah, that hits too. All right. <laughs> He's still standing, though. Still standing. Jeez. Yeah. This uh, is the commander for a reason. Okay. Well, I guess that's going to be it for this. Okay. But it's going to take damage on the next start of its next turn, so. Got to do a dick save, but yeah. All right. Uh, someone roll me a d20. I think it's my turn. I think. Nope, hey, I roll more. Okay. Just from the cursory glance of thing, it looks like there's still more star moths than there are of your Amada. But each side is taking some damage in ships. Okay, one minute to strategize. Go. Uh did somebody go inside here? I couldn't no. see anything inside. I couldn't see anything inside, and I'm not running in, wandering through rooms all by myself in there. 
Okay, yeah, because let's take this one out, and then we'll head in there. We'll let the tr- the treant take these guys out, or Sparky, or Marigold even. Uh, but yeah, I'll run in there with you next. All right. You guys good? I'm good. All right. Den of War. There is two bad guys and... No, we're not going to do Den of War. There's not enough people left. So, Elf Commander, deck save. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to split the middle. First time I said it was 12. Second time it was 24. So, halfway is three more. So, DC 15, right? Is that right? No. That is not halfway. It'd 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 be a 20. DC 20. Okay. DC 20 deck save. Ah. 66. Woo. He takes 11 points and he's back on fire again. Yay. Okay. He is pretty pissed off. Let me roll one more time. Nope. Wow, he can't recharge shit. So, he just wants to kill something. Damn, I wish I could recharge something. Oh, well. Uh, Enix, you're in front of him. So, they're both coming for you. Long swords. Not NX, I meant to say Simon if I said NX, the one right in front of him. They both missed. Of course. Awesome. Uh, that's... Uh, you know what? He is going to move because he doesn't want to stay here in the fire. So, opportunity attack, NX, if you want. you dang right. Son of a bitch. Freaking 27. Ouch. Okay. And then Simon, opportunity attack if you want. No, no, I need to save my shield in case I need it. Okay. All right. Uh, You know what? Yeah, he'll just stay up top. It'd make it too damn difficult to try to go underneath. That's his turn. Elf Warriors. This one is going to try to shoot Enix. Longbow, longbow. Wow. Miss me. The other one is going to try to shoot Simon. Longbow, longbow. Miss, miss. And. Mm, right there. Trent. Do you want to rocket somebody again? Yep. That's you guys want to do which one? Rock- um, yeah, you want that one? All right. Yeah. I'll throw a rod at the big guy. The boss man. Not to. Okay, not advantage. He's not very fired. He's just on fire. Son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 and he just gets blasted off the wing of the star and goes flying out into the astral sea or wild space. <laughs> Uh, if you'll Audra, she'll move the ship. You're now next to each other again. Honor Guard is dead. Simon. So Simon's going to use his bonus action to attempt to force push this one here off the side of the ship. Strength save, DC 16. 16. This is a spell? Uh, no, it's my uh, feet. It's my... Um, it's my telekinetic feet. Oh, telekinetic. Okay, right. Uh, strength save, you said? Strength save. DC 16. Ah. <laughs> Enjoy your time. Enjoy your time in space. Uh, and then Simon is going to run the five feet through the open door, and he's going in, Brian. Okay, so a little through the mind, but uh, 5, 10, 15... Right here, you got a door on the left and a door on the right. And then the stairs are, are right beyond that five feet. All right. So I'm going to go to 
this this door, the door to the north. Okay. And I am going to, as soon as Annex is beside me, I'm going to hold my door open, and I'm going to open it when Annex is beside me. Okay, you're going to open it when Annex gets next to you? Yes. Okay. I'm with you. Okay. Is that it for Simon, then? Yep. Okay, Marigold. That's you, Don. Oh, you're right. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I was going to stabilize um, the undead one here. With a medicine check? Yeah. Okay, give me a medicine check. Medicine is wisdom, as I recall. Okay. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> You, go, you try to check his pulse and you stick your finger in his eye socket? <laughs> <laughs> Feels kind of gooey on the inside. Anything else, Marigold? Um, that is your action. Actually, uh, I have Lucky. Oh, look at you. Oh. So, since I rolled a one. Yep, rolled again. Hey, Woo! there you go. Well, it's, not, it's not a natural 20, though, right? No, it's 16. All right. So now stabilize. I'll take the X off of him. Uh, he is prone, but you can sense his breathing get back to normal. No longer labored breathing and spitting up blood and guts. Yep. Okay. Indeed. Anything else for Marigold? Uh, no. She's druidish, so she's got one little turn. Sparky. So the guys are inside, right? Simon is. Simon is. Okay, I'm going to follow Simon inside and catch up with him. I think I've got enough movement. Okay. Should be okay. fine. And I'll say this hallway is 10 feet. You guys can stand next to each other. I'm cool with that. <laughs> oh, I, I can Sparky be behind was, him. I thought Sparky was staying outside in order to take care of the last of the... Oh, um, is there one left? I thought we killed dudes. them all. All right, so there's one the monkey dude in the top. Oh, the I had my screen scroll down. Uh, I can do that. I can take care of him. No, no, no. Okay. Let the tree ant do it. Oh, that's yeah. That might be a better idea. So I'll catch up with Simon. And where's Enix? Is Enix inside too? No, oh, he's yet. still right on the outside, right okay, here. So Enix I'm is the still last, there. last one of the turn order. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to move up with Simon. Yeah. Say, what you doing, Simon? What you doing? Where are you going? Get no response from Simon. Yeah. Oh, am I allowed? Am I allowed to respond? <laughs> That's free action. I'm cool with that. Free action. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm waiting for Annex, and then I'm going to open this door because I didn't know you were coming in, or I would have said when anybody comes near me to open this. I will open this door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you retcon that. You can open it for Sparky. I'm cool with that. All right. I will open the door. Okay. Uh, you see what looks to be some so, some sort of an armory in here, but nobody moving inside. Okay. Okay, Arnold. Arnold, um, are the ships back together again? Did no? She hasn't. Phil Ardra has not moved yet, right? So they're still like thirty foot apart. Uh, where is Phil Ardra? Did I take her out of this turnover? Okay, she's no, she's there. I feel like he might have skipped her. No, I, well, I, I thought that I thought that we just got back together. Okay, so we did we did close time. together. So our Arnold could cross over, is what I'm asking. Yes, that is okay. correct. He's going to cross over and move up, I think, to here, and then just kind of keep an eye on things in case he needs to help. Okay. In case you need some healing back up, and I guess he'll go ahead. Why not? He'll go ahead and give himself some healing while he's not doing anything else right now. He'll do cure wounds on himself. Okay. So eight more healing for him and minus one mana. Okay. That's it for Arnold. Okay, hold please. Will I read? Hmm. Alrighty then. Uh, do. Okay, Enix, Simon, 
Sparky and Arnold without giving me kind of a check. You guys can almost feel like the ship is like free floating at this point. Like it's not under power. The one that we're on? Correct. Okay. Okay. Enix, you're up. Uh, Enix is going to use his action to take a um, health potion. I can't see. I'm oh, sorry. I can't see Enix's health bar. Is he really low? Uh, more less than half. Okay. She get ten, oh. not six, since you use, use an action right. for it. Right. right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. That should be eight ten. Correct. Yeah. And then I'm gonna head inside with um, these guys. <laughs> Poor Arnold's going to be killed by the last Bowman. <laughs> Hopefully that tree end takes him out. But the tree, the tree end already went this turn. That's oh, why right. I thought we were going to start. That's why I thought we were going to take him down before we all went inside. <laughs> well, Ar- what's, what's, what's Arnold going to do? I mean, he's only dropped three times. What's the fourth time, you know? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. right. Who cares? He's like practically undead at this point, I imagine. <laughs> Yeah, right, his Enix. god, his god is sort of like, why do you keep knocking on the pearly gates? Go back. <laughs> so, Enix, you're, you're good with it. You're still going inside, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, D twenty, somebody. Hey, is it my turn? I think it's Don's turn. Oh, Don's no, turn. I did it. I think last oh, you did. time, oh, maybe right. the time before I that, I might be my turn then. Seventeen. Okay. You guys are doing a number. Well, your side is doing a number on the other ships. I guess technically Marigold and Arnold are the ones to see this. I see two more of the Star Moss uh, explode into pieces, and one of your own ships does the same. Okay, you guys need a minute to strategize? Does it matter if we do? <laughs> no. So... Uh, I forgot the hallway description. There's still doors we haven't opened. There's a door to the south of us, and there's okay. a stairway down to the left of us. Okay. And the ship is in free fall, so... Are we more Simon... likely to find something downstairs that has to do with piloting the ship? Simon gets to the helm. Simon can pilot. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to figure out where the helm would be most likely be. I don't know that we would know. Okay. But well, I would it's... guess downstairs. Yeah, I mean, technically, Simon, you have been on a star moth because you were on the That's true, ship was, you guys yep. left. And then you guys, I can't remember if we said Enix. Enix, Jeff, did you have an astral elf in the beginning? You didn't, did you? Don? Say it again. Did you have Enix from the very beginning? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was trying yeah. to figure out what the logic was for having. Enix on Toral and all this happened. Regardless, you guys are familiar enough with the ship being on it before to know where the uh, spill jamming helm should be located. I don't think Enix was a was a uh, Don wasn't on the initial the initial one where we left Toral. He oh, came in. Right, a, he right. came in after that. I was left at the next one. Okay. All right. Okay. Same thing with Sparky. Sparky joined you guys once you're already in Wild Space. Yeah. But Arnold right. was with you. Simon was there. And Marigold. Although Sparky has wandered the wild space for quite a while, so he might have at some point been on one of these. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe it's unlikely. Yeah, maybe not Star Moss, but other ships, yeah. Okay. Star Moss are primarily just for the Xerxian Empire. Okay, gotcha. Okay. All right, you guys good? So and I guess like, you never really did answer the question of where is the helm likely to be then? Uh, down the stairs and then either the door on the left or door on the right, about 20 feet more down. Okay. So in the planning stages, I think that's where we should go next. Okay. 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 I'm not going to deal in a war since there's only one bad guy left that you guys see. Uh, he got kicked off. Uh, one guy swimming. And here we go. Can Arnold go down a fourth time? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Arnold. He needs to get the shield spell. That's what he needs. Okay. Uh, long blow twice. A miss. A miss. <laughs> okay. Uh, then Treant's going to 
take out that last uh, uh, last guy, I'm assuming, right? Add advantage. Nope. Add advantage. Click on advantage. Rock to the face. Oh, yeah. 20, 22 fucking damage. Uh, yeah, he had five hit points left. So he obliterates and pieces of them fall out into the wild space area. Arnold's okay. going to turn back and point up at the tree at you rock. Okay, the ships are still touching. You get it because he threw a boulder. Oh, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was it's slow okay. On that it's, one. Late. it's getting late. It's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Fear the mine. We are out of turn order. You guys go down into the room where the uh, spell jumping helm is. You find no priest, but the helm is there. The priest had disappeared. Okay. So I am going to roll another d20 for the ships and the den around you. So someone roll me a d20. Wow. I'm rolling uh, like shit. I think it's Rob now. Nicely done. Two more ships. Okay. You can see that the numbers are about even now around you guys. So we're out of combat, but these ships are still fighting each other. So I just need a plan from you guys about what you want to do here. And I'm not going to make you do a wisdom check for this uh, because Grimzod, as he comes, oh, he's, he's not he's not alive yet. He's just stable. Okay. Never mind. He can't tell you what I was going to tell about, you. How about Crux? Because Crux should be up, right? Because he got healed by Marigold. Right. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say, yeah, everyone give me a wisdom check. On just, straight up, just straight up wisdom? Yep. yep. Oh, sorry, that shouldn't be an advantage. Holy shit. Who rolled the 20? Was that Simon? Yeah. Wow, and Enix. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, that's enough. So both Simon and Enix, you remember... At one point, Grimzod had the ability to turn your ship invisible. Oh, I do remember that. Now that you, so, mention, now that you mention it. So now you guys have got a decision to make. Do you want to try to, uh, what's the word, Command, commandeer, take over this? Uh, yeah, commandeer. yeah, commandeer. That's what I was trying to think of. Thank you for making me sound like an idiot <laughs> <laughs> on my own. Uh, you guys can try to use this Starmoth ship to infiltrate the city proper. Uh, Grimzod can turn your ship invisible. Again, granted, it's only for an hour to try to get further into the city. Or you guys can come up with something else if you want. But those are two valid options right now. Oh, I think we should... Yeah, I think we should infiltrate using the Star Moth. Is that what you guys want to do? Talk about it. I mean, I is mean, there another? It's, it's, as, it's as good as any other plan. I was going to yep. say, is there a better plan? I can't think of one. Um, just, just on a game note, are we going to, before we get it heavy into that, are we, we going to stop tonight in a little while, or are we going to go that's, longer? That's my plan because we're over three hours now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're over three, three. Two minutes. So I'll, yeah. you're getting close to a good stopping point. I, okay. That's why I'm asking, what's your plan that I can figure out from there where gotcha. a good stopping point will be? But no, you're not going to finish this up tonight okay yeah yeah I, I think infiltrating with the ship would be good agreed okay so a couple obvious things i'll ask you how do, does how are you going to communicate that to the rest of your fleet that they don't start attacking you can't we do it through fel ardra can't we tell her and then she communicates it you can, but unless there's like some obvious marking on your ship, and it's the den of war, there's mm. chances you're going to get friendly fire or not so friendly fire or whatever. We can put something up. Yeah, I'm trying not to just give you all the answers, but I'm just trying to peek. Yeah. We can we can it's hang on Arnold, Arnold's underwear from the flagpole. <laughs> Special banner. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, would a, would a special banner or markings do it, or you are you envisioning something more elaborate than that? This is up to you guys. Mm -hmm. Brian, is the um, is the 
the the weapon that's below Sparky and Enix. Is it charred to a crisp? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say at this point, it's been hit by at least two or three of those. I can't remember it's two or three. But so what do you guys think about identifying this ship as the one with the charred uh, with the charred crossbow on the on the main deck? If that's if that's that, enough, to, yeah. If that's the only one, if yeah. the only star moth that was damaged that way, that would be fine. Unless we've got paint or something. Yeah, I mean, the only thing about marking the ship is then the other side might recognize that it's not one of theirs when we try to sneak in, you know, or infiltrate. Right. Uh, how much time do we have for this? What's the time frame that we're talking about here? Like, again, you're still in the middle of a a battlefield. There's still ships shooting all over the place. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So. I'm, just, I'm just looking at my spells, and I just am wondering what the time frame is. What are we... Because if I cast something for 10 minutes, it's not going to be long enough. That's why I'm... Yeah, over the course of 10 minutes, someone else is going to be firing upon or joining uh, on either side. Okay, this, hold on a second. Battle. Hold on a second. How long do we need to pretend that we are... How long do we figure we need to pretend that we're um, one of the bad guys? That's what I'm asking. What's the time frame here? You're is asking me that? an hour? Is it... Yeah, well, who else is going to be able to answer? How long, how long will it take us to infiltrate into, the, is what he's asking, yes. I think, from where we are right now. Oh, to get into the city? Yeah. I'm sorry. I missed out what your original question was. Uh, you're probably a good half an hour, an hour, you're okay. guessing? All right, so I am going to, um, I don't know what the back of this ship looks like, but uh, there must be a spot for me to cast light um, on, uh, on a back fin or something to be able to identify us as the sh the ship that has the that has the the port light on is the one that uh, they need to not destroy. Does that well, make that sense? A, well, that has a port light. Oh, okay. You're going to cast I'm light. Casting, yeah. Cast the so, light spell nice onto the ship in a spot that's easy to identify and then we're going to use that as our marker as we're good guys. And if you're if it's on the back of the ship, then the enemy might be less likely to see it as we approach. Well, they the city. can they can see it too. It, it's one of those things that if there's light, if there's if there's light been cast on it, could have could have happened at any time. It might just be a normal light. Yeah, who knows? They won't know what it means, but we will. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Right, it's it's something that's kind of innocuous, but could I but can identify us? And it's yeah, not something it definitely. That will yeah, definitely better happen on another ship. Yeah, definitely better than a banner or something that is obviously not right. the same as the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys going to communicate that to Phil Ardra, and she'll get the word out to the other ships that are still in battle to uh, refrain from firing upon the, the yep. ship with the, the light beacon in a specific spot. Right. Okay. All right. While you guys, while well, that's going on, Crux is crying over Flinch's body. Trying to uh, revive him. Is Flinch to, dead? To no avail. Yeah, I'm Flinch gonna walk. Died. Flinch has died, along with all the other folks that are here. The Hat is are all dead. Um, the Grimzod's crew are dead. So we're not talking zero hit points. We're talking dead. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. All right. Is so there, you guys Is there anybody, uh, Brian? Is there anybody, Brian, that is just unconscious that needs to be brought back up? Uh at this point, no. I was waiting okay. to see if any of you guys were going to try to check on any of these during this conversation, but it didn't. So okay. <laughs> Oh, that's messed up. <laughs> so, but Crux and uh, Grimzod are going to stay aboard this ship because they've lost almost all their crew. Matter of fact, Grimzod is probably going to cast invisibility on the ship soon just so they can get out of here in one piece because they don't even have enough people to arm the uh, the Blithi or the Manganel. All they've got is the Treant, and it's going to run out of rocks and kegs of alchemist fire pretty soon. So you guys are on your own if you're staying on the Star Moth, which is what I'm Hearing you guys say that's that's what you want to do, correct? Yep. Yeah, sounds yep. like it. 
Okay. All right. So notice though that Conch and Vega and Teddy are all down on the bottom of the ship. We'd like them to come with us too. Just yeah, I'm going to do that just like before. If if they end up being the next session, they're with you. Not going to separate the party that way. Right. Uh, For all intents and purposes, the the all the PCs are on the Star Moth. Okay. The NPCs are all on the second wind, the living tree ship. Okay. All right, so let me switch back to the big map just so I can talk about your approach, your plan of action, and reiterate what I said earlier. So this side over here is the military docks. This is where all the star moths are for the military. Over here is the more of the public docks, all the oddball stuff that the average merchant and or, uh, I guess, a c- civilian uh, would park their ship. So what is your guys' idea or plan? Or are you going to bypass both of them and go straight for the uh, the temple? Is there something else you want to look for? What's what's your, what's your star idea moths, here? The star moths, the other star moths are all in one place, though, right? On the right-hand side. Yeah. How many are there? Uh, at the dock? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you only see one at the dock. The rest of them are in the battle. Okay. Well, we got to be we're careful on. about we got to be careful about that, right? Because we're good until we get there, and then as soon as we get off, hey, everybody's going to know. I think if we know that we need to be going to the palace, I think that we should just leisurely fly around, maybe do a loop, and then just go straight to the palace. Because do you guys want to deal with trying to get from the docks to the palace on foot? No, no, I, I think you're probably right. We should just right. try to get as close as possible to the palace before we have to abandon ship. So there's two ways to do that. We just fast as we can straight there or we uh leisurely meander and make it look nothing to look at here nothing to see here yeah, yeah look over there oh there's a big battle going on over there yeah while we do while we do this that's what so i'm I, thinking is the big battle is like that's where we should be and the fact that we're not uh makes us look like a sore thumb and we just need to head straight in could we rig the ship to make it look like it's damaged and that we're just sort of... It is damaged. <laughs> you know, you know, it is, you know it is I, on fire. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I mean? Like, we could, yeah. limp it, we could limp it on in a, in a meandery sort of way that makes it look like we only have partial control. Yeah. yeah. That might bring some help, but in the time of the battle, maybe they can't spare anybody to uh, come and check on us and they'll just sort of let us know. And then all of a sudden, we'll just make a, lo- a hard left and go straight to the temple. Boom. Now, I don't want to be Captain Obvious, but you guys know that there was one other person on that ship that somehow got away. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed when you said he wasn't there that he wasn't there there, that he left. I didn't realize. Okay. So on the way, though, I think we would be doing a search to find that guy. Yes. So so we think he's off the ship? Is that because we haven't not seen him, him, I guess? No, I think what Brian's telling me, telling us is that uh, we don't know that. We just know that we haven't seen him. So he could be hiding somewhere. He could be hiding on the ship. So we should probably, during that half-hour trip towards, as we go towards the city, we should be searching for him. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right, no. so the plan Simon's, is... Simon's go ahead. flying it, so... So he's probably not searching. Yeah, I can. Help uh, yeah, I, yeah, so, good. Yeah, we should do in do it in teams. So Arnold and Sparky can search, and then Marigold and. Well, and this is all search. you're doing as you're approaching the city. I'll let each one of you uh, roll it with advantage to see if you can find where he might be hiding. Investigation roll. is that what we're rolling? Are we rolling. Yep. Well, not Simon because he's he's piloting the ship. Okay. Right. Yeah. But investigation, or can we use another? Uh, it's going to be investigation. You're trying to find him. Okay. With advantage. Oh, not my strong suit. The wisdom. Uh, investigation, investigation is intelligence. Is intelligence. Oh, in stereo. <laughs> that was good. Keep mind, you they can roll up for Marigold and uh, Arnold as well. Oh, I can roll for Arnold too. Okay. So, 
so far, you guys are finding jack shit. <laughs> so Arnold got a 17. Oh, Enix did all right. Look at that. Sorry, Enix. Enix did all right. Okay. All right. You guys thoroughly search the ship. You find a couple of uh, hidden cubby holes, probably for smuggling of some sort, but you still find no sign of the last little astral elf priest guy. Mm. You must so have missed can, a step out of there or something. You can deduce that he had some means of getting off the ship. Unseen. You cannot find him anywhere on the ship. All right. Did they find anything fun while they were searching? Oh, probably. But let me look that up between now and next session. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just so I'm clear, your plan is you're going to kind of pretend like your ship is damaged, which technically it is. And you're going to make your way straight for the temple. No, we're going to make our way sort of in the kind of in the direction beside the temple. And then as soon as we're close, right? Because if we are limping it towards a temple, people are going to be like, holy crap, they're going to crash into the temple. Ah, okay. I'm with you. Right. So we're kind of going beside the temple, not on a collision course. And then right at the last minute, we're going to hang a Louie and then go to the temple. Okay. All right. So a couple of things I need to make sure, I probably should tell you at the beginning. So there are various spots around the temple and on the island itself that have like, you know, ballistae and mangonel as defense mechanisms. Most of them are centered around the temple and this little, you see this little barricade thing here. It kind of separates the rest of the city from the actual temple there. So uh, there are going to be a few of them kind of you know, dispersed through here, but most of them are on the military side and around the temple. Okay. So you guys, the plan is limp along this side until you get close enough to it. And then, and then what? And then make a run for it. Yeah. Can we, is there room for us to land it? Or like we could just pretend that we're having trouble keeping the ship afloat and then like sort of emergency land it. Or crash into some ballistae or something. Yeah. Part of that's going to be like a perception roll when you guys get closer, determine what your options are. I can't give that away right now until you actually get closer. That makes sense. Mm Mm-hmm. But I understand that's your intent, and, and I'm okay with that. Okay. All right, let me check my notes one more time, see if there's anything else that I forgot that happens during this. Oh, yeah, this will be a good uh, <laughs> thing to share with you. Uh, I'm going to roll a couple of D20s real quick. See lots of ships uh, being destroyed, being hit. Um over the course of the next half hour. Um, you can see uh, your coalition ships are slowly starting to dwindle. And their numbers are now less than what the star moths are. And you also see uh, two solar dragons that have come out of the wild space and joined the fray. That's actually part of the reason why your forces are starting to dwindle as these solar dragons are attacking uh, coalition ships. Uh, but they're all staying away from, from your ship and your clever disguise. What else here? Cool. I think that's all I'll share for tonight. And we'll pick up from there in our next session, whenever that may be. Okay. All right. Sounds so that's the session. Uh, how was that, guys? Good, bad? Eh. I liked oh, it. Good. I liked I liked the ship to ship combat, you know, with the like boarding and all that. Right. This they had a whole section in here of like shooting ballistas and mangonels and all that stuff, but it just it didn't feel like that's not what you guys signed up for. You know, you guys signed up yeah. to play your PCs, right? So that's why I decided to kind of narrate that and come up with these different mechanics of how the, the battle's going. So hopefully that was okay for you guys. No, yeah, it worked out nicely. Did okay. um, Just on a side note before we sign off, did we find anything on the ship that was interesting when we were searching? I'm going to have to read on that. Oh, okay, uh, so next time. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head, and I don't want to bore you by waiting on me to read here for the next minute or so. So I'll get that squared away, and I'll either put it in Discord chat, or we'll pick up on that uh, at the beginning of the next session. Sounds good. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate your plan. Hope you had fun. Uh, I'll let you know when we do the next spell jamming session. It may be a while because April is uh, 
kind of screwed me over on work. All right. Gotcha. Uh, Thanks a lot, yeah. Brian. Thanks, guys. Talk to you guys later. All right. Yep. Take care. All right. See you guys. Bye.